Magnum P.I. and Higgins here. Couldn't resist. I'm Higgins. That's, that's, <laughs> that's right. Clearly, I'd Higgins. be Higgins, um, right? Okay. <laughs> I want to make sure I got my role right. Uh, we wanted to start out. Uh, uh, we're going to start out tonight with um, a, a very, very, very quick smoking nun section, and then we will get uh, to the guys from the What the If podcast who will be diving in with us to simulation theory. Are we in a simulation? Uh, that would best explain Steve, I think. It would answer a lot of questions as to um, really? that side of the of the windows. But uh, mm -hmm. today, Paul Agia released a video discussing the uh, replacing Darwin debate that we did on uh, on this channel it, between Dr. Herman Mays and Dr. Nathaniel Jensen from Answers in Genesis. And uh, it was a really good debate, I think. Um, uh, there was there was a an interview that they did with Dr. Jensen on Answers in Genesis News uh, last week in which uh, Dr. Jensen tried to explain some of the reasons why he think it didn't go so well. And so Paula Gia um, assembled myself, uh, Steve, and uh, Herman Mays, and uh, John Perry from Stated Clearly, a bunch of us in his latest video. And I told uh, tw the Twitter sphere today that you know you've made it when Apology turns you into a cartoon character and puts you in one of his um, videos. So we're going to play a real quick clip from that video. And um, to see more, uh, uh, Steve, if you'll put the link in the description of um, that video, go check it out after uh, after this. Uh, you will not regret it. So without further ado, here is Apology's latest video. They did on non sequitur. Somebody said non sequitur. Oh, hey. It's Steve and Kyle from the Non Sequitur Show, the hosts of the debate. We've arrived. Paul, you talk about actual science on this channel. There's no need for me. I don't know what the hell I'm doing here either. Don't ask me. Everyone just shows up. But Dr. Mays is here with me, so I think we got this covered. <sighs> I told you, Steve. But since when do I listen to you, Kyle? Henry Morris. <laughs> and he doesn't listen to me, ever. I don't. I really Not ever don't. Does he listen to me. Uh, it's cool. I, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you what Kyle just said about arrive. You know, I said about arriving, and what he said. You know, to, to be on Paula Gia's channel is such an honor, and to be cartooned by him and immortalized is just beyond words. Um, you know, we've known Paul for a very long time. He's you know been a great friend of our channels, and I, I love his content. And so that uh, that is probably obviously going to be one of my favorite videos on his channel of all time. Not just because we're in it, but I think the, the quality on it and just the content of that particular video is so good. I think it's his longest, too. It's like 50 oh. minutes. Oh, you, I love that video. Well, that you're I mean, he's it. got so many good videos. Stop it's really it. hard. So maybe I am biased, of course. I mean, we're, I'm in it. <laughs> it's me. But it's really a good video. I mean, it, the video is exceptionally well done and spot on. Well, l let's get to our guest this evening. Eh, screw Gentlemen, <laughs> it is it is good to have you back. For those of you who don't know, uh, these are the uh, the guys from the What the If podcast, awesome podcast, and, and um, I'm going to let them explain kind of what they do because they could probably do it way better than, than I could, but uh, the concept is amazing, and we had an amazing time when they came on last time. We talked about Flat Earth, and um, the people seem to really love the uh, the sun hole theory. I think that's what the uh, the best part of the uh, the talk was. So um, please, gentlemen, let everyone know who you are, where they can go to find your podcast, and um, why you guys do what you do. And before you do, let me just say this: each of these guys, if you, uh, I tried to put uh, their um, kind of, I guess, their resume or their descriptions of of each individual in the description of this uh, video. And just to let you know, it's so extensive and so impressive that I could not fit <laughs> all of it into the description because I ran out of characters. So um, these two guys are, are serious and they're funny and what they do. So uh, please, gentlemen. I won't speak for Matt's resume, but I can say that a lot of most of mine is just junk, like junk DNA. You know, it's just there's only a few things that are that are actual, that are real, verified. <laughs> I'm Philip. But, but like <laughs> DNA, it gets copied over each time, right? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Oh, excellent. <laughs> I, I finally changed out of Palatino font. And uh, <laughs> deep cut, deep cut, everyone. I'm Philip Shane. I'm the host of uh, What the If, uh, as uh, Kyle so kindly said. 
and uh, I am a documentary filmmaker and a consumer admirer and um, yeah, of science. There's a third thing that I am, but I can't remember what it was. I don't know. You're, he's not even lying. I just put the link in, and your rise is like CV is like like that long. I couldn't put really fit it in. It's so. imp- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm Matt uh, Matt Stanley. I'm a historian of science at New York University. Uh, I think of myself as a science educator, and I like to tell stories. Excellent. Uh, and you actually are a science educator, if I'm not. Mistaken, like professional. I do my best. Yeah, right. So I, I should point uh, out to you guys that, awesome. that 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 sun hole theory that we had developed during that program was actually utilized was awesome. by a group of people that actually had. And I don't know if this was a coincidence, but it seemed like a hell of a lot of coincidence because the model they used in a virtual uh, program was the sun hole model that we had come up with. So I don't know if it was a coincidence, Wait, no, but you know they watch our stuff. But it, it, it was a group of people showing that if Flat Earth was the case, this is what it would kind of have to be. And it had sun holes. <laughs> so oh, that's great. Oh, wow. Inspire people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what, we what, need to find what, out what, where what? so we can get royalties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Car, 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 Car modeled it. So, I mean, again, it could be just coincidence, but I thought it was kind of – Strange that it's just a few days after we did our thing, cars modeling this exactly the same model we came up. It could have been a just again mm-hmm. coincidence. So, but she's very good at modeling. It sounds, like <laughs> it sounds like one of those. It sounds like one of those, like weird janky, roadside attractions you'd see in the the abandoned part of Route sixty six. You know, turn right for the oh, sun. Sure. Yes, right, stop and that. you have to call yeah. it the sun hole. I don't feel. I don't feel like any other name yeah. would 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 be. A- it's got to be called the sun hole. <laughs> the sun hole, where the sun do shine. Yeah, uh, for just I, I guess for those of you who are watching and don't have any clue what we're talking about, I'll, I'll yeah. sum it up really quick. Basically, we decided that if, if you're on an f- infinite plane of a flat earth and we see the sun come up and the sun go down, that means that on an infinite plane, you would have to have a hole that it goes into to loop back around and then come back up again. But we went further have a hole, that, didn't we? We, in uh, it, it may be uh-huh. that it's a like a cutout because it couldn't be just a hole because the sun moves across the sky depending on the seasons. So it's it well, no, it's, it's would, like Swiss cheese. It's like a whole, new yeah, hole every yeah. time. Yes, or yeah. just you know, we're just. But exactly what oh, was that's that? interesting. Hole and they, you know, yeah, and yeah. eventually, the entire radius around us will be like the sun will eventually cut through the entire thing, and that'll be the apocalypse. Right. Yes. <laughs> like, you, like, you, run, you run out of land. Yeah, you run out of land. Right, like, it's going to be every. It's going to be everywhere. Yeah, it's going to be a bunch of. Like in the everywhere. cartoons, when you see the cartoon character, and then somebody uh, like Tom the cat is up saws the stairs, and then yeah. Jerry the mat, yeah, saws around, and eventually it falls. Yes, uh, that's excellent. Uh, now all you have to do is pick a date. Um, just uh, pick an apocalypse date, and you will officially right, yes. have started your cult. <laughs> That's uh, that's step one. That's right. Um, That's right. (laughs) And there is no step two. The what the if cult. (laughs) The what the if cult. Exactly. I could. I could be. I I could add. Yeah, for sure. I can add that. um, I I, I think you 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 kind of started to say, but what 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 we do on what the if is, uh, rather than you know just for instance. Rather than reject ideas out of hand, out of ordinary, or, uh, you know, unusual ideas, um, ideas at the edge of science or beyond, um, rather than just shut those down, you know, one thing that people in the um, pseudoscience or, or whatever uh, category will often protest is that if you're a skeptic, um, which I confess to be, uh, we're, we're not open-minded. And even though Neil Tyson has a wonderful phrase, he says, we should be open-minded, but not so much that our brain falls out. However, um, what we do is we say, all right, let's take that idea. All right. If you said there's a flat earth, for instance, or perhaps we're living in a simulation as tonight, um, let's see what that would really mean using all the science that we do know, right? Um, so, you know, what would that have to be? So, like, if the sun, if the Earth were an infinite plane, the sun definitely comes up mm-hmm. from somewhere, and that's where you get your sun hole. Yep. So we'll take whatever Excellent. crazy that idea we so feel dirty. like and run with it. Mm-hmm. God, that sounds dirty. 
what yeah, what's the weirdest what's what's the the strangest idea that you've um applied this to it's just it was Ooh, so bizarre good. and out there oh good question well i don't know about strangest necessarily but i know that one of the ones that really sticks in my mind as spectacular was when we said what if space were filled like uh, with air and you could swim in it oh or, yeah and you, you know, could just swim out there that was fun yeah you could navigate it and so then we said well there would be cre you know it wouldn't just be people that could go out there the entire biosphere would have uh migrated yeah, out to space so and evolved space whales and space algae all yeah. kinds of good stuff uh, i worry yeah. about space bears yeah. space bears i think would be yeah. the just just no 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 space bears some, just pu yeah. punch them in the nose punch them in the nose oh good good advice uh well, wait they <laughs> No, they wouldn't need a spacesuit. I was going to say you couldn't do it through the, the spacesuit, but bears wouldn't need a spacesuit if there's air up there. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, no, exactly. that's the idea like that nobody maybe. would. But do it. I See, what we're experiencing now is something. Talk about weird things. So, one time Matt and I were doing a show, and Skype was really causing us trouble. And so there was a huge delay between you know us talking and we were always out of sync so we said okay today's what the if is time dilation what if you have a <laughs> i was going to suggest that but i figured that's where you're going yeah, yeah. we're yeah. a little out of sync we're, a little out of, we're out of phase with each other in the same spatial temporal dimension dun, 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 yeah dun, 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 dun. for sure oh, guys the Feynman diagram for this head. show are out of control um so we after the uh, following the, the flat earth what the if episode uh, i thought about a theory that i think is fascinating and one that um you can really i think dive into from all sorts of angles especially doing you know using this method the the simulation theory i think you can really have some fun with so um i thought we would do that this evening and um at this time i'm gonna pass it over to you guys and take us through simulation theory all right cool all right so Matt, should we like you are you are about... made of bits <laughs> well what you see of me right now is bits anyway right um sometimes it's helpful to make sure we're all on the same page about what a simulation is and sort of the the basic parts of it is that cool absolutely yes yeah. clarify your terms right yeah exactly <laughs> because it gets thrown around a lot um Basically, I, I think the, the core of a simulation is uh, a set of rules and some kind of device, nowadays is usually a computer, that carries out those rules, usually over a period of time. So uh, Minecraft is a great simulation, right? So it has rules like everything is made out of one meter cubes and gravity. And when you punch a tree, the tree falls down, right? As you do. So that would be too, right? <laughs> so a simulation can be, uh, in principle at least, as detailed or not detailed as you want. And we, we tend to think of them as being realistic, like matrix style, right? Trying to replicate reality. Um, but that's not the case. You can make a simulation of anything you feel like, right? You can make a simulation of dancing ham sandwiches. And as long as you've got consistent rules about how ham sandwiches dance, then you're good to go with your ham sandwich simulation. That is fantastic. And what do the ham sandwiches think of it? Yes. <laughs> There's fantastic. the rub. Mm -hmm. Instead of the, um, the tango, you would have the, the, the mayo, maybe? The mayo. <laughs> Cinco de mayo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's good. So then the question is, if uh, um, if we are living in it, in other words, which direction do we take this what the if question? And I think we could mm -hmm. start by saying, if we're in it, uh, how could we test to find it, not to, to figure out? How do we figure out whether we are in a simulation or mm -hmm. not? And then the biggest question mm. is, uh, who's running the simulation? And, you know. mm. So Matt, we, if we, yeah, if we I wanted, right, right, mm. we 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 sort of we ran through an earlier version of this once, uh, an earlier episode, and one thing we came up with was we would want to find tears in the 
in the rendering or the realism of the, the rendering, of the rendering right? right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if we're has, taking as has anyone premise, ever seen one? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, um, actually, I would. Uh, this is not my original idea, but uh, there was a similar video that I saw that uh, likened to black holes to be those tears that um, oh. when, when we when we see the um, oh, yeah. something that's pulling all the light in in the universe mm -hmm. and having one of those events, that is actually the glitch. What we call a black hole is the okay skipping. All right, so that's a nice yeah. That's so that's a good launching point actually. So if we're saying something like we live in a simulation or do we live in a simulation, we're taking as our hypothesis that all the things around us are all, everything we see, everything we interact with are all a result of rules set down by the simulation designers. Right. So. The, whoever the simulation designers are decided we needed gravity and inertia, um, conservation of angular momentum, uh, cheese goes bad after a couple of days, right? This, uh, uh, every, everything we interact with, somebody had to sit down and set up a rule saying, this is the rule that governs this particular thing, right? Um, and because those are, those are all the rules we interact with, uh, there's a sense in which we can't imagine others right we're we're stuck with what we're right yeah. correct right um, and so yeah. so the um the, the looking for the glitch theory then goes something like this that uh if all the rules of our reality are computer code computer code is never bug free so if we spot yeah. a bug uh, a failure of the code of reality around us, then that's a good reason to think that the laws of nature are just codes in a simulation. Why do, why do we why do we assume that it has to be bug free? There's no such thing as bug free code. Well, that's extrapolating from our own experience, right? Um, uh, and you could make a good. What does it be I a think you could make a reason. What's be a loop? If you have a recursive loop, say that. Um, what happens if you just do a simple code, uh, recursive loop, 10, uh, grant all over oh, rule, 20, yeah, go 10? Yeah, so the argument, that's, that's I think code, the argument that's, would usually... I mean, I, it's very simplistic. Oh, sure, but, yeah. Right, but the, so the argument would usually go, the more complex the code, the more, the more weird intersections you have, right? And you're, you're guaranteed mm -hmm. that's something, right? Um, so if, uh, if the world around us is code, um, and we're assuming that the alien coders are not infallible, right? But like I said, like as you pointed out, that's, right. that's an assumption. Make um, if you assume the simulation is perfect, then it's very hard to get traction. Can, can, I, can people... I give you an example of a glitch? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, when we first started this program, Kyle was American. Now he's a guardian. Don't know how that happened. It's a glitch. That's true. That is true. <laughs> I um I we did an episode on. Don't know, so I can. I must be losing my mind. Let me explain. Let me explain so that I don't they don't think I'm. Uh, it's a it's, a, it's a Mandela weirdo. effect. I'm telling you. We did a uh, an episode on Asgardia, which was that um, that space nation that that Russian oligarch created. Uh, Ooh, yeah, that, right. He has a yeah he has a satellite up in space now. And what you do is when you become a citizen of, of Asgardia, you're able to upload um, something of yours digitally, like a, a photo of you of of whatever that you want, and you're essentially putting yourself up into the country up in space. Well, I declared myself a citizen of Asgardia, and I uploaded. Um, our first episode of this podcast up there. So we're flying around. Oh, nice. We're spinning around the world wow. right now. But um, but yes, I am a dual citizen as we speak. I am. I I do share citizenship oh, with uh, Asgardia. That's very exciting. Yeah, that is so cool. Yeah. Uh, Wait, now, um, does this I'm mean sure when you when you go through TS when you go through TSA at the airport now? Do you you have to show both passports or? I I, I don't know. But what I, what I was hoping that I, I could get was like. For times when I'm speeding or, um, you know, I fail, I fail to stop at a stop sign, I'm hoping that I can pull out the um, diplomatic immunity thing that uh, I am, That's uh, a good idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going to try it and see. see if, uh, my, well, having grown up in Washington, D.C., having grown up in Washington, D.C., I know that only works if, if they have, uh, you have to be near the consulate or the embassy. Where they, uh, or the, oh, yeah, I, right. guess they do. I never thought about that. Do you have diplomatic immunity everywhere? I guess you do. 
Yeah. Well, I'm hoping that since um, our, our president is such buddy buddy with uh, the Russians and the our our president head of state is a Russian oligarch that we'll get some um special privileges out of it. Do you know how uh, Trump loves cool. Russia? Yes. Well our, so, if so our the, president may be evidence of the glitch, I'm not sure. Uh, you stole my life. Yeah, so the citizenship <laughs> change is actually actually brings up something important, which is that we update our simulations, right? Every now and then, World of Warcraft gets a new patch. Uh, yeah. And sometimes that's putting in new rules. Sometimes that's putting in new objects, but with the old rules. Um, and so if we're living in a simulation that's con currently being run, they might be running upgrades on us on any given day. Right. Ooh, and uh, and well, we, you talked well, to... Oh. <laughs> it's like a Windows update. Do we get rebooted every so often? Exactly. Exactly. Asgardia. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's right. So buttons. somebody those put. <laughs> so in the new patch, um, there there is a you know a, a, they always have the um, the the file telling you all the things they changed in the patch, the change log. Mm -hmm. One of the lines in the change log is all Americans now change to Asgardians. Right. Very cool. Uh, it, plus, if, but, if we are getting upgrades, though, Steve. Yeah. Steve is in desperate need of a of an upgrade. Can we can we make that happen? Uh, Simulation people. I, I'm already Steve 2.0, baby. I don't need any improvement. <laughs> my, my, my. Now, you Look, talked about the recursive Ooh. nature. You talked about the recursive Ooh. nature, and that Which? that's like uh, when I watch The Sims, we'll, we'll play The Sims or something, right? Or any any game we play, and, and there are AI characters, because there's a deeper thing, which is or maybe we are an avatar of some, something else. Like, it's a little more complicated. But just for the moment, we take the, um, what do they call them, the non-NPG, non-player non characters, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, if so, if there was a glitch in the game, they don't react. For instance, um, I was watching some people design a game, and, you know, when they check for bugs, one of the things is, like, can the character uh, get stuck in, like, a corner behind a fence or some, in some weird way where now they can't get out, right? Um, yeah. the character doesn't, he doesn't react. So it's not, it's not like it knows that there's something unusual about that. So updates, right. bugs, any of that stuff would mm -hmm. be, it seems to be invisible to the characters. In other words, for the characters, well, we could say this, the fact that we don't see any bugs probably means that we are truly dumb, like level one uh automated we're the mobs. Auto yeah. automatons in the game we are not some sort of second level sentient aware of being in the game clearly yeah uh, uh, my question would be uh, kind of similar or on that same point when you're in a game you know there are there are other things we assume i guess around you outside of the field of view that you can see so how would that play out in in this? Like, if if with the what's continuing to go on outside of the the view the viewpoint? Yeah, Matt, you yeah, you, so one you of had the, some very interesting thoughts. So yeah. this is, um, one of the problems with simulations, just in general, is that they're really resource intensive. Right, so it takes a lot of memory, takes a lot of computing power to run a simulation. So almost always, the first thing you do when you set up a simulation is you figure out what you can ignore. And one of the basic strategies is the one you just described, which is you only simulate the area right around the player. And the stuff around the corner or behind where they can't see, you just don't bother simulating that. So you don't have to spend the CPU cycles and hog the memory for it. Right. Um, and that's essentially what makes a good video game from a bad video game is how successful they are at it, it, working around those sorts of problems. You're right, talking about it where there's procedurally generated. Where there's procedurally oh, generated. Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be procedurally generated, right? It could already be there and you're just loading it into memory or something. Um, but if you're simulating a whole universe, our universe, um, that takes a lot of computing power. And it might be reasonable to assume that they only simulate what they have to. Now, wasn't it, was it Niels, Niels Bohr who suggested that 
because of the, the weird observer effect or whatever in quantum mechanics mm -hmm. that if everyone stopped looking at the moon, eventually it would disappear. It would go. Yeah. Well, Is that's that right. And that, wow. might be, that might be it's an a interesting real guy, way a to. Guy. That's philosophy. Um, that's not computer science. Okay. <laughs> no, figuring out how to not simulate something is a really important part of computer science. So like, for instance, I wouldn't, if I were running our universe's simulation, I would not simulate the inside of Jupiter. Doesn't, right, doesn't interact right. with any observers. It's not part of the game. Totally not worth doing those calculations, right? Um, right? And if it's a dynamic kind of thing, as Philip was suggesting, that is where people are looking, that gets simulated, and where they're not looking doesn't get simulated, that might be something we might be able to mess with. So you literally couldn't look behind your own head because the minute you did, what was behind your head would be created, and what was in front of you would be destroyed. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. Wow, as you, that's deep. As, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's like yeah, I said, there's a window. Too, but, I mean, we're talking about clipping, by the way, when when you just get stuck in walls, <laughs> like for example, it, it's called clipping, and so it, it, that would be the glitch, right? So, but I never see, I never yeah. see anything like that in real life. You don't see you don't see people just like somehow materializing halfway through a wall or something in real life, right? So that's so. A Philadelphia experience. A Philadelphia so experience. let's imagine though, you you wake up tomorrow morning and you do see someone clip through a wall, and you say. Wow, that's weird, right? Um, and then the next day, you see somebody else do it, and you notice it's always, I don't know, this green light always goes on right before the clipping occurs. Eventually, you'll probably just accept that clipping is a thing that happens. There's some law of nature you yeah. didn't know about, right? Um, so trying to figure out what's a bug and what's just a feature that you don't know about yet turns out to be kind of tricky. I can make, uh, here's a sweeping statement that leaps us forward uh, even a little bit beyond some of the steps people go to automatically. And that is, we can say that there are, let's just assume there are no bugs in this. No one's ever seen one, right? Let's say there isn't. Is there a way for us to test um, some, is there a way for us to test this in which it doesn't rely on bugs? Are there any sort of known things about a simulation no. or a non-simulation that um, would be different? Or I don't. I can't think of anything that you would be able to test for in a simulation because everything would have already been either coded or designed or built for you. So you know where you you would be looking. I think is already pre -pant the What I think that wouldn't happen necessarily is that we would be able to figure that out it seems like they would have a some sort of mechanism by which we couldn't d discover that we were in a, a simulation you know some kind of well here's what firewall right here's what it is though in, in fact we've seen this like in the matrix and other stories about simulations that the character a character resisting and saying, I am not going to do what the simulation seems to want me to do is the first step towards becoming self-aware. That's kind of what we're talking about, that, the, that if we are characters, mm -hmm. let's say we are the Sims, or we, maybe we can even think about it, looking down at the Sims, how can those Sims become aware? They basically, those Sims have to become aware of us. Right, right. They have to and, start and, and, resisting... And, uh, I don't think that they can. Creepy as hell. I don't think they, I don't think they could. But I could, I, could, I could give you an example of what I think would be something that would be not a glitch in the system, but what we could test for and what we are testing for. And that's the granularity of the universe. That would be like uh, equivalent to the resolution, right? So if you're mm -hmm. looking at the course yeah. of fine grain of the universe, that could kind of tell us if we're in a simulation to some degree. And I think, that if I'm not mistaken, they're using uh, lasers and quantum mechanics and a bunch of other really cool stuff to actually mm -hmm. to test this hypothesis. Are they not? How yeah, that's right. That yeah, way. that's trying to test. Um, I would need to go sit down and reread the research, but there's um, it's generally accepted. There's probably something called a Planck length, which is a minimum size in our universe, um, and at least in principle, that should be something we should be able to test. Yeah. Now, would that now, persuade you? Right. So, yeah. right. If, if you found I was that say there that was this is a. 
Sorry, we got last. Uh, Phil, Phil's, Phil's about a second behind everybody else for some reason. Yeah. I don't, oh, is it he's just got, me? He's got time dilation going on. Yeah, it's just you. Uh, yeah, I don't know why. Just on, your, yeah. are on the same page, but just on your end. Can I like disconnect and reconnect? It might work. If it I disconnect, can I, will can... I reconnect and pop right back yeah. in? We'll let you back in. Yes, yes. you re you'll come back into existence, sure. Pop out of reality. All I was going to say is Exactly. I've, I've got to go, uh, you know, put a little more juice in the uh, batteries for you to, so that you guys can continue Fire to exist. Fire up the hamsters. <laughs> exactly. Oh, excellent. I was just going to say that this okay. is the cool thing about what the if is that we get to a point where we need to learn real science by starting with this crazy idea. And so this notion yeah. of the resolution of the universe is very, very interesting. So, Matt, you can. Absolutely. All right. Continue with uh, that. All right. So right back. while we wait for him to come back in, yeah. Matt, will you will you kind of explain in uh, or a little bit more what you mean by that um, that small unit of measurement and how that would go into disproving that we were in a simulation or might? Yeah, I can try. It's tricky. Um, so let's see here. Um, one of the things that happens in quantum physics is that energy comes in chunks. That is. Uh, uh, you know, if you think about energy as being like water you're pouring into a glass, we're used to thinking about you could pour as much or as little water into a glass as you want. So same with energy, right? I can make the ball go fast. I can make it go medium. I can make it go slow. Um, but on the atomic level, quantum physics takes over and you can't pour the water. The water comes as ice cubes. So you get these chunks of energy. Mm -hmm. right? um, and that's kind of the 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 basic thing that makes all of the quantum weirdness start. Uh, so you can, it turns out that if you have chunks of energy, you also have chunks of space and time, at least hypothetically, right? Um, so there's a smallest unit of time out there um, and a smallest unit of length as well. Um, and this is, uh, yeah, you know, this is the the this is the scales of the universe where our understanding is not very good. Um, so it's definitely in the realm of hypothesis. But but let's say that we we confirmed it tomorrow in some experimental way that there was a minimum size to the universe. What would you feel that says about the simulation question? Uh, I don't know. Who, who are you asking? Anybody? I mean, are you asking? Like, <laughs> okay, well. Okay, uh, the Planck length, um, it, it, like you said, is a very short distance, and I, it, it's, it's it's smaller than the atomic size of a proton. I think uh, we have somebody in the yeah, way, way in chat yeah. actually. It's, it's, yeah, it's about uh, ten to the negative thirty-five uh, meters, so it's it's really small. A uh, Planck time is yeah. ten to the negative forty-three seconds, so it's, that's actually a very small period of time. And there's a lot of quantum indeterminacy that we just things break down at that level, basically, right? So if we're going to say that. Um, Anything that's less than a Planck time is nonsensical to even talk about because it's there's no mm -hmm. indivisible way of even dividing a Planck length or Planck time. But there's there seems to be some correlation here, and I don't want to go too deep in a tangent, but maybe you guys can suss this out. But it, it, I know simulation theory and and holographic theory are com kind of completely different, but there I do see a slight overlap mm -hmm. because in holographic principle, you're dealing with information in qubits in in a plonk by plonk square right which would mm -hmm. be the smallest area that you can have to store one qubit which is very similar to what you would have in in simulation theory of what what would be the smallest resolution to hold information and in this case it would have to be something along the lines of a qubit would it not so it, what, yeah what, well that's what, right and what if, if that if be the case if you're willing to invoke cool. quantum computing, then simulation then the simulations can get much more complicated um, than they had been um, previously, and it would, uh, would, because would it not require yeah, quantum like, computing. I mean, if it's so complicated. Well, um, it require that? It, exactly right. That would certainly be a better solution than the alternative. Um, but the idea that um, the Planck length is like by finding the Planck length, we have found the pixel. And the pixel shows us that we're being procedurally generated, I think is sort of the, the implication. Um, and I don't know if that's a sound conclusion to make, because it might be that we just happen to live in a granular universe. Okay? It's not clear to me that granularity is necessarily more likely to be simulated than not. Okay, well, let me ask you this then. And I'm, I'm probably getting too deep for most people, but I, this, is what, this is what the if, right? So that's what you <laughs> yeah, do, right? right? So all right, let's go a little bit deeper. Um, I, I'm not sure that I agree that that there would be a correlation between the Planck 
length and the pixel because a pixel actually stores information. A pixel can store a, 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 a something on a bit of information, right? So if it's a yellow, green, whatever. Mm -hmm. It has something in that pixel, right? Because it requires certain information to describe that pixel. But information in the universe has to be in a in a Planck square kind of thing, right? Planck by Planck that holds one qubit. But would yeah. you in a in a program you have discontinuities, right? It's not a continue a contiguous flow of time. Right, it's based upon your clock cycles. So, right, yeah. In the in the real world, do you think there's discontinuities, or do you think it's contiguous? Yeah, I mean, there should be. If um, if we're thinking about we things that. like space time correctly, then yeah, the the Planck time suggests there are there should be these short discontinuities, um, and it's yep. just that the discontinuities are so small we don't notice them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did everybody stop um, watching? Sorry. <laughs> I know it's too much. <laughs> oh, so I think we I think we we started with black holes a few minutes ago, um, and I, I totally understand the appeal of the idea of a black hole as a rift in the simulation because it's just kind of a visually cool thing to think about. But actually, black holes are very orderly things. That is, they're very well described by general relativity, uh, and. I would I would expect a hole in the simulation to be something that doesn't fit well into physics. That is something that we simply cannot understand. Um, and black holes are really, really understandable. So I well, think they're not a good candidate. Hang, hang on. Um, well, two things. One, it's obviously the um, holographic principle stems from black hole theory, right? Because you're dealing with how much entropy mm -hmm. is in the system for the event horizon. So there's a relationship there. But um, we uh, we understand the outside. We understand the event horizon and all that kind of stuff, the photosphere, the black hole. But mm -hmm. when you get into the singularity, then there's problems. So would that be maybe where the discontinuities would come in? That's a fair point. I'd be totally willing to to accept that kind of argument. Um, and uh, you know, one of the things that astrophysicists argue about is whether you can have a naked singularity um, that is one not surrounded by some orderly object, right? Uh, and that might be. Uh, and that might be a, a good way to think about the simulation bug, right? There's a part of the code that's not working well, but the simulation can't access it directly. So all you can do is access, you know, the routine that's supposed to access that. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think there could be a yeah, naked singularity. I think the universe hates naked. The universe, for some reason, this could be the rules. Um, you can't, mm -hmm. you can't have a naked singularity, and you can't have a, a true vacuum. Uh, could be. You might want to stick time travel in there too. If you want to do that, yeah. You want to stick time travel. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of things you can you can probably come up with rules for to the to the base level of reality. Mm hmm. Hmm. This is yep, uh, that's right. So this is like mind bending. It's totally mind bending, right? Because essentially <laughs> what, what we're doing is do. we're 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 questioning the, the 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 basic categories that we use to understand everything else. Um, mm. And that gets gets tricky, right? So if you're a Minecraft character, you've never seen a circle, right? It's it's all squares everywhere. Uh, can you even conceive of a circle? Right? Do you is is uh, is that something that you could even imagine? Sure, that's a fascinating question. Yeah. I can guess. Why so, couldn't you conceive of a, that's a concept? You can conceive of a circle. Mm -hmm. Can you have a perfect one? No. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, if you don't know what, us. if you don't know anything, like, wait, he's lost his voice. Have we lost Philip again? <laughs> yeah, oh, lost no. Phil again. Phil, Phil, Phil Phil's up. having glitches. This is what happens when the when the program has a glitch and a bug. You end up with Phil. Philip, <laughs> Phil uh, what did you do last time to uh, to fix it? Try that again. Um, okay. Hi, Phil. Uh, but I think what he's saying is, if, if you're, you know, in Minecraft, it's all made of the the squares. So if if that's all of your surroundings and you don't have any concept of a circle why would you need to have why would you need to come up with, with it you know it, it it affects you none so maybe there's something out there that we can't conceive because we have no notion of it yeah that's right and i think this is one of the things that's that's fun about thinking through the simulation theory is that it makes us aware of things like that in the same way the minecraft character can't think about a circle. Is there something out there that we simply can't conceive of because we don't have the fundamental, the, the fundamental right. uh, things that allow it to exist aren't written into our reality? Right. Uh, Philip, know, are you back I, with I us? Think are you back, Philip? Talk, nope. No. No. Nope. He is going for the sign I, I language. Think 
I, I definitely Dave, think there's certain things wrong with Steve, Steve, uh, Dave, can you give, let's send um, Philip another, a new link. So maybe send me a, a, a new link for him and I'll send it to you over Twitter. We'll see if that takes care Upgrade of that. Upgrade your windows, Philip. And I'm talking <laughs> about on the, a Mac. Yeah, yeah. I, I, okay, well, there you go, better. Um, yeah, I can't believe I just said that. Yeah, Windows is, I hate the Windows updates. It just drives me nuts because it forces you to do it, right? Um, Linux looks yep. so much better. Oh my God. Um, but I, I think there's certain things that you can't, you can't, Imagine, like, what what would it be like to even imagine something like a square circle? Yep. It's yes. not something you can well, actually imagine. That's nonsensical. Mm -hmm. Right, it, because it is nonsensical, right? It's, so you can't, there's certain things you just can't imagine no matter how hard you try, hard you try because it's like, how would I, what would that actually entail? Um, Mine for so. me would be the yeah. um, the end of the universe. Like, I don't think you can imagine the, where the universe ends. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that would be, that's also mind bending i think because we know that it goes on far is it is it like mm -hmm. a wall that it hits or a you know some kind of uh, barrier yeah and this is that's right so i think there's a certain sense in which our brains whether they were designed by evolution or god or the simulation uh, constructors have certain things they do well and things they don't do well um and surely there are things that they just can't do at all right Right. Uh, what What are your um, like personally? How do you feel about this theory? Do you are you one of the? Do you oh, subscribe to the fact theory? that? Yeah. Do you think it, it's possible? Um, it's certainly possible. Um, I think it's uh, it's this the the recursiveness of the simulation, uh, sort of just what we were just talking about. That because we can only use the tools of the simulation to talk about it it seems very unlikely to me that we would ever be able to uh, find a hole in it if it exists. Um, right. And, you know, some people do like probabilistic arguments. They're at, you know, any, any civilization that could make a simulation would do so. Uh, and then that simulated civilization would make their own simulations too. So if you picked a random civilization, it would likely be a simulated one. I can't say mm -hmm. I find that a particularly persuasive line of reasoning, um, but uh, but at the same time, it doesn't have an obvious flaw. It's just not particularly persuasive to me. Right. What about um, do you, uh, what, one question that I have is: Do you think that humanity as a whole, if they were to find out that we were in a simulation, do you think that would affect anyone's behavior overall? Like, would people become nihilistic? Uh, would we see an Armageddon? <laughs> Uh, it's an interesting thought. My, my sense is that if there's anything, if we can manipulate the simulation in some way, um, can we hack it, right? Can we find bugs that we can use? If any of those things are true, then that would make a pretty profound difference in the way we lived our lives. Um, but I don't know how I would live my life differently knowing that the second law of thermodynamics was programmed rather than just came to be. I don't know what I would do differently. Mm -hmm. Um, Steve, you want to, uh, I'm, I'm going to try to talk, feel through this real quick. Um, sure. I'll let you kind of go ahead. Yeah. Um, look at it, if the laws of physics don't hold, okay. You would agree that the programmers, we're going to call them the programmers, whatever they would be, sure. um, they mm -hmm. would prescriptively design our universe such that they would make the laws for us, right? So whatever they say goes, if they right. want C to be this value, then it's this value. If they want to have this happen. If these conditions are met, then that happens, especially in a, in a programming routine, right? If you look at assembly language, yep. something like a, a J and Z, right? Jump, not the zero flag carryover. That's a conditional. So it's saying, <clears throat> okay, jump, do a short jump if and only if these conditions are met. So mm -hmm. if that's the case that the universe is prescriptively designed for us, um, to us, we can't change those parameters. At the inside of a code, um, unless you have some kind of um, – there, uh, you know what? This is a, actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, you can't have code that actually changes itself, right? You can actually have mm -hmm. um, uh, morphing type, morphological type code. Yeah, called, or, it can or, be done. There's a technical term for it. But, but code that can morph into something else. Could we then, you think – hack the system to change these fundamental constants, constants and describe them rather than just describe them because that would be a cool thing now we're See, going to have some really be an amazing crazy territory thing, but right? that'd be cool so that's i mean there, there's a sense in which it's worth figuring out the simulation question just for that possibility right if we could actually change the gravitational constant anytime we felt like it that would be pretty awesome 
Oh man, that would be that would be like true anti gravity, true too. But th th then you but then you have other problems because you start changing the gravitational constant. All the other natural units are affected by that. Matter mm -hmm. of fact, you can quantitatively yep. <laughs> derive all natural units from if you have a certain amount of natural units, you can actually use quantitative analysis to get other units. It's really cool how natural units work that way. It requires matrix theory, and I've done it actually, mm -hmm. so I know it works. Um, but if you start messing with that G, big G, then mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, okay. so it may yeah. be that, you know, the, the programmers have tried 15,000 different values of G, and this is the only one that's compatible with all the other constants they want to have in the simulation. Uh, so we would be destroying our own simulation from within. No, it'd be a bummer. We would destroy ourselves, literally, huh? We would crash the system. Yeah. Yes, that's it. Blue screen <laughs> of death. We would crash the system. Yeah, yeah blue screen of death. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's the end of the universe for you. Yeah, that's heat death. Well, you know, okay. see, isn't it kind of weird though? <clears throat> excuse me. But you would agree that that if this was the case, and the way it's postulated that we are the reason why we're in a simulation would be something along the lines of advanced simulations wants to know their own history, right? Or some kind of history. Of the well, universe. there's there's um, that's, that's, that's right. So this is, I think, we, we should. But there there's several possibilities, right? I mean, what are all the different things that we make simulations for? We do it for entertainment. We do it for scientific research. Um, uh, we do it just to try out weird things, right? We've got computer CS students who are just learning how to do it, and they make crappy simulations along the way. You know, we could be one of those just chucked away. Mm. Um, but it does. But a simulation check, check. does imply. Check, check intentionality yep. ah, you're back yeah right. well this yeah this reality has flat earth, this reality has flat earthers so i can tell you right now whoever designed it they were shitty at what they did and Trump. <laughs> so, yeah, Trump. well and that could exactly. that's weird. i mean if you think of the I classic um you know hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy right the earth is a big computer whose purpose is just to calculate the meaning of life and all of us on top of it are just side effects of that computation right there the, the the programmers didn't care about us at all um our universe could have some some purpose that's not connected to us in any way we're just a, a weird bit of buggy code that's floating around we're, oh, we're, yeah, so that, we're that, an afterthought yeah we're an afterthought that yeah, would go. That, that would mean that they put the like the elements that would you know that were needed to create life just in the universe with no advanced knowledge mm -hmm. that we would be part of the simulation and because those right. elements were together in the program that they created we just are a side effect of of those things you know combining oh, and wow. eventually creating us dude, wow yeah, do you, dude, you, you can hear me now dude he's wait yeah, yeah, he's literally saying uh, i live <laughs> yay he's he's literally saying we're an emergent property of the program we yes, could be right. yeah. uh, uh, philip yeah, here's the go ahead and, uh Yeah, go ahead. Go for it. Okay. Go Phil. Uh, what if uh, I had an idea? I think to to make this because at some point this argument, because the idea that the simulation would be so perfect, we can't figure it out anyway. What if I think our universe is real, let's say, but life is the is the simulation? For instance, we we have no idea why life began. Right? That's still a mystery. Mm -hmm. I haven't checked the uh, uh, more or less yeah the blog lately, <laughs> and um, so is it possible that, for instance, we play a game called the game of life, right? We can create even The Sims or any anything like that within our real world. So is it possible mm -hmm. that we are some sort of evolved oh, like my. we're built to evolve? So everything is real to us, and all the things are new. There's no rules. You know, we just exist mm -hmm. in the universe, and the universe is real. Um, we're just like self-replicating robots, basically. Biobots. Yeah. My mind is broken. <laughs> <laughs> um, and again, there's this question of intent then, right? So let's say right. we do convince ourselves we are living in a simulation, um, and we're sure that some, the progr there are programmers that made the simulation. Can we learn anything about the programmers from within the simulation? What can we tell about the programmers from this place that they've stuck us? I will say that the religious people, let's say, have been trying to do what I imagine. I have an image of the Sims turning around and like looking up at the screen 
and putting their hands up and saying why <laughs> you know or or knocking on the glass you know mm -hmm. um and i think they've had obviously they to my mind they haven't had any success with that really and so we need a way to access right we have to communicate and that's something people have been trying to do actually trying to communicate with the masters of the yeah <laughs> i got it we, we we need a hacker They're not or a, a virus for the code yep. that's what we need that'll be good yeah how would you how would you introduce it i mean how would you even begin to hack that kind of system oh well, that's I where the gods really rely. it's pissed mm -hmm. off one of the gods gets pissed off and decides that he wants to revolt and he sends a secret message to the creation and um lets us know how to do that obviously now here's the thing if we are a <laughs> video game um then we might not just be sort of one single benign simulation where all the parts are working together i think if we are a simulation it is more like a video game and we are being we are all being represented by different like we every one of us is the avatar of some player oh boy and oh, that's all i need <laughs> isn't there a some movie there was a movie don't recently have, about this. <laughs> some players don't have very creative uh or have just given up because there are some people that uh, you can show clear examples of. They have just completely given up on the game. Those are, are the non players. Uh, yeah. Those are the yeah, or maybe we're all we're all mobs, right? As Philip said earlier, we're all the NPCs. There's two people with paid subscriptions in South America, <laughs> and we're all just here uh, in case they want to come visit New York City. Um, well, okay, and, of course. Uh, if that, like the Truman Show. Here's okay. Here's the problem that uh, that I kind of foresee because we're all going to look at it from an individual perspective. Um, yeah. From my perspective, I would be the paid subscription in some way, or somebody's paid. If somebody has a paid subscription. They're playing my avatar. I exist. Mm -hmm. You all are the NPCs because I mean I, yeah. I would default into solipsism yeah. in that in that way, right? Because I would have no exactly. way of knowing you actually are a real. Uh, Avatar of some kind, because you exist right. in some capacity. Uh, that's what you. That's, or not, or that's what happens when you go online to play a game, right? You don't. You you might not know who's human and who's a bot. In fact, I remember when Quake Arena came out. It was one of the first games that you could literally go online and start to play people uh, online. The the one way I could tell the, the humans it seemed to me was that they were much more aggressive. <laughs> And some of them were even cheating, you know. And they, they, their characters literally really acted in a different way than the computer characters acted. I don't know if that's still the case, but that could be very well be mm. what's, what's happening, right? How many players are there? Mm. Is the question. Yeah. Yeah. The last and why did they keep putting orders in the machine? <laughs> is uh, could, would we be able to tell who the main character is by if they are respawning after they die, right? Yes, responding. Uh, we're, all, we're all just here. Yeah. Right? So if so, you know so anybody far, who's Buddha, responding. The Buddha, <laughs> Jesus, anyone else trying to respond? Yes, so far, that's two. Um, Buddha versus Jesus. Lazarus. And, uh, well, there's like Lazarus, four in the Bible that yep. actually came. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Yep, there's a whole handful of them. Well, I don't remember their name. Oh, what one about, of them definitely even had a name. Go ahead. How would you, how would you like code in for things like consciousness though or um emotion and the, the you know just the, the way that we react to certain things i feel like that's something that i don't know how you would program that into to something you know it, it, mm -hmm. it when you look at the sims they're yes they do things but for the most part they're just kind of robotic in their day to day they go to a point they they do you know whatever you instructed them to do and then they they don't but we seem to have a, an extra level to that in that we can create. You know what I'm saying? You can't. You don't see a sim on its own going out there and just you know, putting together a uh, a computer. Right. So this is you know a profound question that say AI researchers and uh, neuroscientists are trying to to calculate is is everything that happens in our brain. Um, in some sense, procedurally generated? Can we reduce everything to a series of ones and zeros? And this is a good way to get a fight started at like an AI conference. 
is you say, so who here thinks we'll eventually be able to simulate consciousness? And half the room gets upset, and half the room thinks it's great. Excellent. And, and then one guy says, it's a possibility. Yeah, it's totally a possibility. I mean, there's this uh, this crazy game called Dwarf Fortress, which is a super intense, detailed simulation. And uh, the dwarfs in there actually have likes and dislikes, and they get upset if they don't eat their favorite food, and they're happy when they pet their cat. Uh, and it produces all kinds of crazy emergent behavior that looks a lot like sort of crazy people walking around doing things. Isn't that the, the that is um that's kind of I guess coded in ahead of time, right? Mm -hmm. Like, are they are they actually reacting though? You, you know what I'm saying, or is that something they that... actually? Yeah, they do react. I mean, it's deterministic, right? If you start with the same the same dwarf in the same situation, they'll go through the same day, um, but they will actually go through and interact with each other, and unexpected things happen, um, and that's part of the the, the joy of the game is um, seeing the bizarre things that happen. Okay. Awesome. Now, here's, here's an idea. I feel like if we are a simulation, DNA is significant in figuring out the answer, right? Like DNA, if, if anything appears to be code in this world, it's DNA. Ah. <laughs> is funny that right? you should say that. No, it's oh, just funny someone here has that. strong feelings about that. <laughs> yeah. But funny you should say that. Steve, what? What? sorry, what? I got to I got uh, sidetracked <laughs> for a second. Um, is the, is DNA a um, code? Yeah. Oh, matter of fact, that's what I just got sidetracked on. Um, somebody just mentioned me. I had a, a respond real quick. Um, we're going to be talking about that with uh, John Perry from State of Clearly. Matter of fact, that's actually who I'm just responded to. Actually, <laughs> coincidental. Um, ooh, Matrix thing. Could that be like programmed that way? Have some yeah, right. I was actually talking to John exactly. Wow, that's he's saying DNA DNA is that's, a code. Uh, and, well, I'm going to be arguing that DNA is not a code, and and it's funny. John just actually said DNA is not a code, so he agreed. John and I are on the same page on a lot of this. Um, he says DNA is not a code. Um, his argument is that the genetic code is the code, and I will argue that the the, the symbolism for the genetic code is a code, but the, the the way that we look at the codons, the way that we actually look at the the way the codons are read as it's translated in the ribosome is actually a cipher. As a matter of fact, most, I've talked to three PhDs in genetics and biology, all three of them so far agree it should have been called a genetic cipher rather than genetic code. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna be arguing that it, genetic cipher is actually more technically precise than it become called a genetic code, except if you're dealing with the actual symbology of the CTA and G, those, those are actually a code and I'll explain that in my presentation. Okay, let me cool. take a hundred steps back. <laughs> you just say you agree. Just say you agree, Phil. That's all you got to do. No, 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 because again, in terms of learning science, this is where this is all very useful for me. I confess, and I, I really need to just take some time and I'm going to take a class or really sit down with a book and read it through, but like I, I don't quite understand the basics of uh, DNA. So for instance, you said DNA is not a code. So I know what DNA is, the physical thing, the double helix thing inside right, every cell. The molecule itself, right. Right, right, molecule, okay. You said the DNA is not a code, but the genetic code is the code. <laughs> um, well, that'd be kind of a tautology in some way. Um, right. I mean, do you really want to? I mean, do you want to go down this path? Because we're going to. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if we need to get into that. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to give away my whole presentation. No, no, you know? I'm taking um, another hundred steps it, backwards, and what, um, so D, 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 for those who have no idea, like myself, DNA has four letters. Here, okay, let me. Here's a question for Matt, science historian. Um, mm -hmm. One of my questions has been that there's two guys. And I believe a woman who's been left out of the story, right? Who discovered DNA? Right, right, yep. right before that, did did like the fact that the, well, were I, they searching for a code? Did they know? Hey, we're looking for a code. And did other people have that idea? Or how crazy was that idea before they? Every everyone DNA? knew that there was a substance called DNA that you could distill in the laboratory, and that that carried information from generation to generation. What wow. Watson and Crick and Franklin did was find the structure, and then once you have the structure, then you can figure out how it works. 
Yeah, I was going to say that Wilson mm. and Quick didn't. They didn't discover DNA. That's kind of a, mis a mistake. They discovered <laughs> the double helical structure of it. We knew DNA uh. existed prior to that. They've known. They've known since the uh, I think it was late 1800s that DNA existed. Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, but they didn't know the structure for it. So and so, so the, that was a, a kind of a. And the double helix meant that we we could now see this is how it works. It copies from one, the strands right, go right. apart and then protein or RNA right. they, or something builds the other half. To, to really make it simple, the argument when, the, when you say the, sta the statement DNA is a code, the reason why that's false, and even John Perry from State clearly agrees with this, uh, because I just literally talked to him, it's on my Facebook, he just said DNA is not a code. We're, when people say the macromolecule, that structure that houses the nucleotides and their sequencing with the, the phosphate backbone, the sugar phosphate backbone, that itself is just a molecule. That would be, to say that's right. a code right. is like saying that a, that a, a hard drive is your information. No, the gotcha. hard drive is a medium with information. Yeah. So you, to right. say that DNA is a code, that statement is false. So I'm taking two approaches. I'm the one that DNA is not a code by that means, and then we're going to talk about the genetic code. But that by the genetic code, we're going to, we are going to be talking about the RNA synthesis into proteins. Um, the way John and I slightly differ, I'm going to be arguing that the symbolism for the genetic code, the C, T, A, and G, right, which stand, which are the basically the symbology we use for the the nucleotides, that is a code. Okay, fine with that. But the instruction set, what we actually use for the in in, in ciphering, because it is more like a cipher, uh, what amino acid is going to come out of that ribosome in the in the polypeptide chain or the protein, that. Is, is, I'm going to be arguing as a genetic cipher rather than a code. That's where we slightly disagree. But again, I love talking to John. John's smart. He's 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 um, just really awesome. Uh, he has brilliant videos. I, I his videos from the first videos I watched on YouTube. So I have a lot of respect for the guy. But I also, you know, I, I have my own positions. But Dr. Mays um, is is uh, he's helping me on it. He, he's agreeing with me. Dr. Stearns, who is a geneticist for John Hopkins uh, Hospital, he's agreeing Great with authority. me. And then, yeah, but a valid. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. yeah, right. I, dude, I'm not, I'm not an expert in this stuff. I'm just, I'm just a lay person on the internet, right? So I have to ask go experts. Ahead. But go I, ahead, Bill. So you know. Is it possible that the DNA, you know, whatever, the whole thing, the mechanism, the, the fact that this is how life is propagated, um, is it possible that a – maybe here's a question for Matt. If we think about simulations – Maybe mm -hmm. we would like to find the mechanism for the simulation. Maybe we don't find a bug. We don't find a screw up in it, but we yep. find not like, like you were saying about the code. Uh, we don't know what the code is, but if we could find the place where, you know, what's the first level that's, for instance, uh, it'd be like if the Sims discovered, actually, does this happen in, Inside Out. Anyway, there's some movie I think where the character where they discover that the program itself. Anyway, it, it's as if The Sims turned around and realized um, that there was some there was something called a program inside a computer right. that was running mm -hmm. them. That's what we would need to find. Well, what would be what the do Truman you think, Show uh, did that? I mean, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 And then what do well, you do differently you with your life? <laughs> Matt, what what would be the oh. the lowest level language though? I mean, the, the, right. you know, when we're talk, we're talking about languages, yeah. right? I think I think what Phil's asking in some ways, like right. I program in high level of programming sometimes. I mean, I used to program mm -hmm. years ago, right? I mean, nowhere near the level that people can do nowadays. I mean, I'm talking like Visual Basic and some assembly. So very um, right. from well, assembly is low level programming, but I've done very high level programming with Visual Basic. Mm -hmm. But what? But actually, the lowest level would be machine language, right? That would be your base, right. lowest yes. level type of uh, programming. Who proof programs in binary? Because that's going to be ridiculous. That's crazy. Yeah. So how? So I think it would be quantum. It would be quantum physics. It would be the grand unified theory, right? Um, it would be the 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 clo the the the, um, the thing that could not be pulled apart any further, right? The the one or the zero, sitting on the register. Right, because one thing we know about this simulation is that it is this seems to be designed to be an emergent system, right? And and one thing about the well, we don't, well, that, the design question is hard to say. It certainly is an emergent system uh, mm -hmm. that creates all sorts of strange things. Oh, right, uh, we might be a runaway is. simulation, like we're out of yeah, control. That's right. Somebody somebody forgot about us four and a half billion years ago. <laughs>
I think that's the uh, that's the case. That's absolutely the case. Yeah. So it, it makes sense why, why Trump is president. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, if you take the right pill, you can see that he's a lizard. So oh. I read that book. So guys, yeah. guys, I'm so afraid true. I'm going to need to sign off soon. Um, right out. I don't know sure. if that's going to be any problems. I'll that's, run with it. Um, I can take it. Yeah, I'll take the bet for that. You want to take it over? I'll continue. Um, yes. Um, but thanks for having me, guys. And sure, uh, I hope yeah. we can do it this again. Awesome. Right on. All right. Absolutely. Take care. All right, man. See ya. See ya. Bye. So um, here's the thing with what what the if is. Here, here's a question for all of us. What do what can we learn the most from from this question? That's the interesting thing because this is one of those questions that you start out asking, and like we said way back at the beginning, it seems to immediately shut itself down, right? Sure. Um, and so I think the real question is, let's say we are a simulation. That's the most interesting scenario, right? I think we let's drop the mm -hmm. question of whether we are or not. We we are for the sake of this thought experiment. We are a simulation, and what kind of information might we be providing to the players? Uh, let's let me also uh, say it's not entertainment because that doesn't go anywhere. It, it might be it might be entertainment, but it's infotainment. What's I think the info? It's, uh, it's either to it's either to uh, to answer questions like unknowns that we that we have like uh, you know what are the uh, odds that an asteroid impacts the earth how long will it be before the, the sun swells up and swallows the solar system if we're in an accelerated simulation um it would be to answer questions like uh, how did life form if we were going trying to go backwards in time and setting up the earth in conditions like it was billions of years ago right if our current theory is possible to produce life down the road so, I, so i'm going to guess I'm going to guess that the players of the simulation uh, aren't as interested. In, but I try to think what would be the most interesting thing to them. And I think that all mechanical operations and random stuff that just happens is less interesting to them than the what what would be most surprising to them. And I think that would be our. It's the outcome of the consciousness. Like the consciousness is con human consciousness, or maybe animal consciousness as well, is the thing that makes the game interesting. It's truly unpredictable. Well, do you think so that you, was designed you, and programmed that way, though? Maybe. Do you think the consciousness was programmed into the system, or is it, like, like he said, like Kyle said, we're just an uh, emergent glitch or something? No, I think that, again, if, if somebody's running a simulation, this is, you know, I'm, I'm going by the theory of what is something that would truly provide new information to them rather than rote. Um, in other words, we can, it's interesting you talked about procedural. Um, you know, the game uh, No Man's Sky, right? Big mm -hmm. uh, game, and there's a number of games like that now, uh, where you can travel an infinite, basically throughout the universe, I mean, billions of suns, billions of star planets, um, because it's that procedural thing means simply that Every time you pop out of hyperspace, the game just creates some random, uses some random, pseudo random stuff to create a planet. I don't find that interesting at all compared to games, I mean, it's an old fashioned one, one particular favorite of Myst, but um, games where it's the artist has, or the designers have truly created the things I'm seeing for a reason. Right, they right. want to see so if I you, can solve something. Yeah, more or less on the random, and more so on the uh, well thought out situations. And just the only missing thing to those component of those are how those environments they created cause the um, the character to interact with with them. So, to speak. Right. so yeah. they've designed a specific you know environment that they're going to introduce. A character into and it's what the character in that environment does and interacts how they do that is what's 
the, the what they're going for. Yeah, yeah. I must say that um, I've gotten. A, I'm making a documentary about Mist, the game Mist, and um, I've gotten to know the guys who made it pretty well. And, Great game. Oh yeah. You know, oh, it's best. funny you meant. It's funny you mentioned Mist because my cousin was actually part of uh, Riven. Oh really? So, what did oh, he yeah. do? Which, yeah. is, which is the sequel to Mist. So. Right. Yeah. What's his name? Greg Euler. Okay. And what did he do? You know. Uh, I forget. I think he was some kind of. I think he was one of the programmers. I'm not sure. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Riven had it, Mist was made by like a few guys, literally in a double wide trailer in the woods of Spokane. And uh, then it was successful, and they did Riven. I think it took four years, four years, whatever it was. Later, they they had a lot of much bigger staff on Riven, but uh, Rand Miller in particular. Uh, so there were two brothers who were at the head of it, Rand and Robin Miller, and both of them are good at computers, and both of them are good at art. Um, but Robin was more on the art side, and he also was the composer of all the music. Rand was the computer, a little bit more. At, the, the com- leader of the computer aspect of it, the programming aspect. Mm-hmm. And he totally sees the, he loves all this stuff, by the way. I, I got to tell him about this show. Oh my God, he, he would love this. Um, oh, please. And he, he sees the world, like when he thinks about God and he ever describes what, what might be going on here, he sees it through the eyes of a game designer. And uh, so not as a player of a game, but by the, the designer of the game, Right. And he truly the, the most enjoyable part of the entire process of making a video game for him is watching people play the game. Like he just loves that to see how, you know, just that just that variety of how they do it. And he looks right. for ways to improve, improve the game, too. Um, if something doesn't go well, they he feels like, oh, I didn't do that well. Um, so theoretically, if there was a game designer looking down on us now, whenever we complain, like, why is the world like this? They're going, mm. if, if they're been, <laughs> they say, oh, yes. <laughs> that's a, that's a, uh, there, there's a, it's interesting to think that if that's the case, if we were created by some game designer, let's say, and, and put here on earth, it would be really to see, I think, if he's watching, from where he introduced us to the game until now, we're, we're actually to the point, as his creation, having a discussion about the possibility that he is watching us have a discussion about the way he created. Yeah, like for sure. We're aware that he's there now. So the thing would be, what does he do now? Now that he is uh, aware that we feel that he might be out there, What's now, here's interesting. Step? In watching Rand watch people play the game, uh, and also having been a player, like I've played, and then he watches. Uh, you know, I get to play something he's something new that they're working on, and then he watches. He does not. I mean, he's totally a benevolent guy, hundred percent. But like, he does not intervene. Like, he totally observes. In fact, it's more fun for him to to observe a strict prime directive. Do no, no matter what the player does in the game or if they're doing something wrong or they're stuck or whatever he just doesn't do anything he just watches the whole time that explains also the kind of thing we live in but if someone's well, he, running the would, would he know would he would he know that we're aware of his of some kind of programmer's presence i mean would how how, how i mean he Okay, look, at just because you're a programmer, right, just because you're running a simulation doesn't mean that you can understand the myopic detail of what's going on in that simulation, right? I mean, really? the universe is, is gargantuan, right? I mean, we're just specs in the overall process. I mean, that's like saying, hey, we're, we're, we're going to look into, a, like, a, like, for example, even what, like what we're communicating here, and we're going to find, like, the smallest pixel uh, possible, and we're going to just extrapolate from this that pixel has consciousness. I, I couldn't tell you right now by looking at the granularity that's it, what a pixel even is here, right? So right. maybe that right. we're so small that the, the these programmers are just oblivious to us. We're like, yeah, well, I, like, but let's, like I just had a, a mind blowing idea that what could be happening is that our two perspectives, so our perspective of the players in the game or whatever we are part of the game, 
is so different from the perspective of the designer or player or observer or whatever um, that we it just it's a it's a it's a bridge too far you know what i mean that like they have sure. no idea what we're thinking and they don't i don't want to say they don't care but like um for instance when we look at ants you know uh, um michio kaku the uh, great science and science explainer um he talks about uh you know the kardashev numbers you know about that so in other words he talks about the there, this someone named kardashev i think it is uh came up with these levels of intelligence or levels of mm -hmm. civilization and, civilization one to five mm -hmm. civilization exactly exactly right mm -hmm. and so if you can control your entire planet which we're not quite at that's one if you can control your solar system that's two if you can control your entire galaxy or something that's three and so forth mm -hmm. um but what he says is that we are very if there are much higher intelligences in the universe then we are very likely to be like ants next to a superhighway in in that right. we're living our life and just have <laughs> You know, it's impossible for us to conceive. However, and here's in the I never really thought about the reverse perspective, which is that we're driving down a superhighway. You don't even notice the ants, and if you did, we don't even. Right? It's a big question. What are the? What's the answer? Yeah, yeah, you, you're right. You, you, don't, you don't have that you resolution don't to even notice the ants. Right? You don't care about them. Yeah. There are also, so in fact, uh, just, there's, a, there's a theory that that goes that um, if, and I'm trying to remember which where I saw this, but. It was a, a really cool kind of thought experiment. They said that, okay, if we're looking at 2D characters, right? Mm -hmm. We can see them. We, we can see them because we're 3D. We can see them from um, each angle. But since they're 2D, if we stand up over top of them, they can't see us from that angle because it's one that's outside of their, um, you know. The same would be if maybe yeah. if we're in a if we're in a three uh, a three D simulation that the people who or the things that have us in the 3D simulation are actually 4D, and they're looking right. at down from an angle that um, we can't perceive, but they can look uh, down into. That to me, when I heard that, I was like, "Oh my god, that is that is crazy." Yeah, if it's I'm crazy. reading, I'm reading now. I'm up to the third volume, which is the final volume of the trilogy, the Three Body Problem. You guys know about this, um, sure. series, right? It's mm -hmm. in, yeah, there's right. no, we, we, we actually talked on this the other day that the, I, I asked uh, Dr. Kroon if there's any analytical solutions to the three body problems. And uh, to date, as far as I know, there are no analytical um, solutions to it, but there are other means to, to resolve the three body problem. Right. What is that? But, what is I'm the talking about problem? science fiction novel. This is a, I'm talking about a science fiction novel, right, called The Three Body Problem. Oh, no, I'm talking about the actual right. physics problem. Right, right. right. No, I know. I know. Yeah, exactly. We can explain this so, in a second. Go ahead. There's a Chinese science fiction author named uh, I believe Chi and Lu and uh, this book the first book called the three body problem is really kind of took the science fiction world by storm and it, there's it eventually grew into a, a trilogy of three books and I'm in the third one now but he takes on you know throughout the story incredible weird concepts and then really tries to play it I mean he's doing a big what the if which is what oh, that's how science fiction works and so he has a moment where the where humans they're in a spaceship and they float into a four dimensional bubble somehow and they basically they get to go into the four dimension into the fourth dimension and yeah that thing of like being able to see but they look at a cup for instance like a a coffee cup they see that cup not as a cylinder not as a solid circle but in fact it's all stretched out like a panorama photograph. And that's weird enough, but the level of detail is so rich, it's astounding. They can see down to the molecules or the, the atoms or something like that. Because Whoa. it's just so it's so simple compared to the dimension there. Right. You know? Yeah. That makes sense. Let's uh, so I think we, we can establish this. The, the, the designers are in a higher dimension. For sure. Right. Absolutely. I agree. Um, yep. and, and I would, I was going to ask, in, as a, a tail end of that, 
let's say that let's go back to we are um, the the designers are invested in us and what we do. Like we're not a and, and you know, we were designed with specifics in mind. Um, and not that this would be the same, but obviously our emotions come from somewhere. I think that that would be something that they put in, right? So yeah. what if what if you had a designer that caught a storyline, whether it be whatever, it be a, a love storyline or a um, a villain versus hero, any any of the things that we've happened in in history, like let's say a tragic event um, like war or those small things that we consider miracles that should have happened that uh, are outside explanation, but somehow the people got what they needed to in time, the bomb was disabled in time, the person was rescued before they, they died. What if the designer coming in and doing something at the last second to make it to where it wouldn't go bad because he got emotionally invested in the storyline? Like he just had to intervene and make it happen. That's interesting. That's interesting. So the question is, are you asking, are you saying, has the designer ever intervened? Oh, yeah, or would or, they? You know, if, if they or would they, yeah. something that they feel. Here's a disturbing thought that our emotions, which are so important to us, this might be more like the Westworld uh, structure of simulations, where, uh, for instance, We'll just think about something easier. The Sims. So we watch The Sims, and really, you can see the the whole way the whole Sims work is this: they have a bunch of traits. I mean, it basically goes all the way back to Dungeons and Dragons. But uh, a character has health, uh, intelligence, happiness, right, and all that stuff. And with The Sims, if you don't get them a job, for instance, their happiness and financial thing, they're tamagotchis, right? And it goes down and down and down until they're unhappy. But it's just a game, who can, you know, whatever, the characters, you know, but what if, and this is what Westworld asks, what if those characters actually feel those things, but we just don't know it? So what if all the torture we go through with emotion, and, you know, we were, it's positive, we positive, were, we, we were isn't it? They we have moral no, monsters. They're moral monsters. No, we would be moral monsters if if we are causing pain to the Tamagotchis. By the way, you're you're only oh, right. me because nobody's nobody's gonna know what those right. are. But um, but if if they experience pain, I mean, oh, do you really? Uh, they were yeah. good. They were cool, yeah, weren't absolutely. they? Um, well, I mean, okay, would we be more monsters if we didn't recognize they were sentient? If they didn't experience things like pain, would be we be more monsters? And if if they did experience it, um. What does that mean to us as far as keeping their code? I mean, could, could we turn them off? Is that is that something that's uh, morally permissible? If they're well, here's a, a major and more concern, do I they, would do they say cease that, to exist though. Right, Sorry, I would know. say that whatever emotions a sim feels, in my mind, it for them it's it could be intense, but for us it's very very low level compared to our emotions, right? And I think that maybe this implies that the designer who's watching us. <laughs> their emotions must be so intense. In other words, that whatever torture we go through, let's say they recognize it, but they're not, they don't consider themselves a moral monsters because it's like, it's not, in other words, if you step on, I hate to say it, but if you step on an ant, or we don't think of ants as having pain or pleasure or complex, right, emotions. Um, right. I think it could, this could be the horrifying situation that for us, it's like overwhelming and it's, well, it creates all these questions. But for the designer, um, it's nothing compared to the, their emotion. So feel for them. Mm -hmm. Well, right. I think, yeah, we uh, don't consider uh, anything mm, to be, have emotions. Like, uh, right. But, they but, do we, but do we know? Yeah, that's the thing. Do we know? I, I think, I think, yeah, I think we can say we know. I think you can make a good case from a neurological point of view that they don't have the ability to have things like certain complex things like executive functions, decision making abilities, or emotions, right? Because in order to have those things as we understand them, you need certain things like in the mind, in the brain, right? You need a physical substrate, which we, we call the brain. I they have decision making that. skills. Um, they're really, actually, well, kind of ants don't. I mean, they're, they're really a high mind but, for the most part, right? Mm. I mean, right. they're, yeah, they're autonomous in their own know, way, but it's more instinctual than anything else, I would imagine. Well, we we right. are a hive mind, too, I would say. 
I'm just less yeah. aware of in them. Some, in some ways, I think I think that's a holdover. We are animals, and I think that yeah. you know, as as far as you know, we because we have um, a tribalistic type thing in our societies. I mean, that's that's a hive mind. That's group I think in some ways. So yeah, I can see that we have some some. I would say uh, carryover or uh, remnants of, of our old biological ancestry in that regard. Right. Sure. Actually, this 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 starts to give us a, 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 another way of looking at the division between the lower level, um, let's say, sim uh, players and the designers. Uh, that the design we think we have individual right. Well, let's say we do. We have individual we individual free free choice. We have all this kind of stuff. But for instance. Um, you don't even have to go up to the designers of the world, people who deal with the macro systems. So um, city planners, uh, Mark Zuckerberg with Facebook, Facebook, right? Um, uh, anyone who deals with humans on a much larger scale, the stock market, right? Economists and all that kind of stuff. They don't care what the individual emotions are, right? They might say, yeah, there's a whole sure. range of, of stuff going on here. Some guy's rich, some guy's super poor, and maybe the rich guy's happy in some way and the poor person is not happy. But they don't care. They're just interested in the system, um, the hive sure. itself. So, for instance, bees, who knows? But if bees do have individual ideas of themselves as individuals, it's not apparent to us, and it isn't even, since it's not accessible, it's not interesting. Um, right. So we could uh, say that's, that's a good. Yeah. Yep. Prison's that way too. Prison is a um, you know they don't Ooh. obviously care uh, one bit what each individual prisoner is or or what they're you know if they're going through anything if you know how they feel about this they're going to do what's best for the in, uh, the conglomerate everything as a whole they're going to do make decisions based on what's best for that entire operation and not at individual prisoner level. Yeah. So one thing that could be entertaining the, the designers, of course, this is a little bit obvious, but like just the whole evolution of our species would be interesting to them. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think uh, I think that would be the uh, obviously the for me if we are in a simulation, that's the reason why they want to see how long it takes us to go from wooden shacks to um, yeah. skyscrapers penthouses uh, maybe even how we evolve with things like uh, religion or morality like yeah. we we no longer take people out and chop their head off on a wooden block and all the towns people go down and um, watch we now do them very humanely behind um, you know thick concrete walls so or yeah. even 500 years ago to now in terms of public executions or, or what we're exposing ourselves to, I think is very interesting. Right. I would or say make it worse. Look at if we, if we think that we're just simulations, people think they can probably do what they want with other people. Cause you know, they would be like, Hey, I'm the only real person. Screw you guys. If I want to harm you and be a sociopath, I can do though. Now, granted, I don't think people turn off like that. I think the people that are born sociopaths, um, it just, it manifests in some ways. I don't think that a lot of laws, preclude people from doing horrific acts i mean i don't i'm not a, a murder rapist uh, you know piece of shit because of, of laws i just i'm not that kind of person right but there are some laws that maybe might people more might be more morale people don't steal because of laws maybe mm -hmm. but there are people like probably all of us we, just, we wouldn't steal anyways right but most of the time i think that the sociopaths are going to do what they want anyways so just people's if, hearts it, it, what's that but it may make it worse i don't know just steal people's hearts that's all that's all i steal oh. is people's hearts I think actually getting to the core of your, like the theme of your show, um, your series, that I th we can say that religion is obviously something that, or whatever it is, that impulse, right, to search for a much higher um, being. I mean, right. it's interesting that we even do that. I mean, you could say, well, it's just a simple projection of when we were children, but whatever. I mean, that could also have gone away when you grow up. You're just like, oh, I get it. Um, but this is, this is a huge thing, right? Going all the way back to, in other words, we can say, I think that Neanderthals and all of those early um, pre-human species, they would do things like bury the dead and have rituals. They had no idea what they were doing. 
let's say, right? Um, so it's clearly important. So it could be that, I just saw 2001 again recently. Just oh. And God, we, there was it, it was a 50th anniversary tour that the film went on in IMAX. Um, that, uh, Christopher Nolan was Thorne the film. Anyway, it was incredible. It was the best screening I've ever seen in IMAX. So there's a little bit of a story there, slight spoiler, but is that the what the aliens are most interested in is our evolution. And they do that by putting out little markers, these monoliths. Um, they, they, put one, they put one on the moon because they want to know when we've reached that level of, of advancement, that we can do space travel and also find something that's buried, right? Um, I think it could be that the designers of this simulation that we're living in, the goal is what they're waiting to see is, do we are, will we advance so far that we find them? Yes, that's like a scavenger hunt that's almost. The end of the game. Like a long-term scavenger hunt. Yeah, or just growing, you know, enlightened, becoming, because when you're, right, when we go into a whole new level of uh, achievement, like Arthur C. Clarke said, it's indistinguishable from magic. So there's so many levels of that for well, us. Are, are we go. fortunate yeah. to be toward the end of this? Are we, like, first of all, are we nearing the end of a simulation? I mean, are we fortunate um, to be at the knows? position in time that's unique in, in, in the history of people where we are, can become self aware of, this, of the simulation theory? Because our predecessors would have no idea, right? Hell, they didn't even I know think, what a computer think, was until you know, like the late 60s right. or something, right? Maybe an analog computer. But, well, I mean, they had 50s, I guess they had. But, uh, but for the most part, I mean, most of humanity didn't have computers, so they wouldn't even know what a simulation would be. But I, I think, think everybody, every level. generation is, would say that, though. Every generation would say, if you ask them that question, yeah. that, yes, we are, the, we are the pinnacle of, we're lucky to be in this time, basically. You know, if you go back, I don't care how many years, you're, they're always advancing. You know, there's, there was never a time where it, it, I know some people think that the Dark Ages, they kind of came back a little bit. But as far as, you know, noticeable steps backward, I think everybody would say that this time we're living in the best time technologically because if you don't have a computer you don't have a concept of it so you don't know what you're missing right right i think maybe then i was about to say that i feel like we are living at a boss level with which global warming oh, yeah it's like a major thing right you, you to advance to the next level you got to get through this enormous thing and maybe maybe we're, the world wars were a previous boss level or something um so, but it could be just that each generation has its the ma this major thing that they uh, there's there's all the different things they could deal with, but basically, you know, they you take on it's it's a little bit this simulation is a little bit like um, oh what's the famous series of games where you can go on any quest. There's many quests. Uh, you don't have to go on a linear Oregon Trail. Oregon Trail. Yeah, Oregon Trail. <laughs> uh, there's one with spikes. Very. It's a fun that takes place in the I hated that game because everybody always died of dysentery, no matter what the hell you did. Dys That's right. You died of dysentery. That's right. Damn programmers yeah. were malicious. Yeah. That's a harsh game so for a kid, man. You're like, why are they all dying? Why are these people dying? Yeah. You know. Right. Who designed that? Sickos. Psychopath. <laughs> I can't think of the game that you're talking about. I'm not a big gamer, so Steve might be able to uh, figure it out. Steve, and what's my the friends game? who know games would be disappointed. What game are you trying to think of? with them, man. It's like a huge series of games, but uh, you're in the mountains and you ride around and you you learn, you meet up with different characters, you learn spells, you gain new skills. Um, I mean, that sounds like every MMO there is. Are you talking about uh, Rust? Right. Um, oh, Rust. Um, Rift? Uh, World of Warcraft? With an S Mario? Uh, uh, Super Mario? Uh, Skyrim? <laughs> Skyrim. Skyrim? Okay, yeah. well, that's never, Winter, that's never Winter Nights. Yeah, that's the Elder series. That, that was the, the fourth, elder I think, yeah. installment. Of, That's it. The yeah, elder the elder scrolls. But yeah. the third installment was my favorite, Morrowind. If you guys have, if, I'm telling you people mm. out there, if you haven't played Morrowind, it's old school, old old school. But it is one of the best games ever, especially for its time. I didn't like uh, Oblivion too much, but uh, yeah, I know I'm, I'm definitely. Those are great games. Yes. Yeah. But We're and, and like, out here. You have all these different quests that you don't have to go on. So each generation, there are all these different quests. Frankly, each character, but like there's all these different quests you can go on. But as a whole, we are advancing in one quest, and I yeah. believe that is towards just discovering the design. 
That's what our, if that's we our are, uh, mm. What if our simulation is to find out how we respond to global warming or if it can be fixed, if the things that we do yeah. could – uh, because remember, one of the boss levels that you were talking about could have been the first ice age. Remember how uh, so the population got down to scary small numbers during that ice age. And yes. if it weren't for those groups of people that migrated uh, during that particular mm -hmm. time, we wouldn't be here. So maybe that's a uh, – they're trying to see things like that, how humanity responds to cataclysmic events. There's something I, I heard recently. I have a, I have a, I have a, I have a minor yeah. correction. I feel like I have a minor correction because I, I hate to get things wrong. I said Elder Scrolls. I didn't mean that. I know Elder Scrolls. It, uh, I, I, I said Neverwinter Nights. Uh, that's Forgotten Realms series. Uh, it's Elder Scrolls. So Elder Scrolls was yeah. a series where Oblivion, Morrowind, and Skyrim. And then Forgotten Realms has the Neverwinter Nights series, which I also play as well. So that's why I kind of conflated them. People cool. in the audience caught it. So thank you. Yes, thank I you. Like, I was like, who gives a shit? Why do people play these games? They're fun. <laughs> They're fun. Oh, yeah, they're super fun. When you have time for them, I, I don't play them very often. Right. In fact, I don't play so much because they're so engrossing. And they're, um, you get yeah. sucked in. Uh, but um, I heard some crazy statistic, and I think this is right. I heard this very recently that we are uh, – it was a question of – oh, actually, here, there's a great podcast, you know, called Big Picture Science um, with Seth Shostak from the SETI Institute, and it's a fantastic mm -hmm. – Show. It's not just about SETI, it's about all, all different kinds of science. And actually, their most recent episode was about DNA and things like that. And um, they said, if I heard this correctly, that we are all descended from one woman 7,000 years ago. So that there are, you know, there have been plenty of people before that, but that for whatever reason, as this, this things shook out, you know, we actually are. This one woman happened to have the offspring that grew to us. Whatever it is, we certainly Mary. go back to, yeah, we go back to or Eve, right? And um, uh -huh. I think that it could be that when you talk about those extinction moments, there might have been a respawn there, right? Maybe everybody died. And so you got one life. Like, you know, uh, that one woman was a respawn. Uh, or a free life, extra life. Extra That's life. crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, my mind is broken now. I can't. Uh, it's going in like nine thousand directions. I don't see how you do this uh, like frequently for your um, for your podcast. Some things you just uh, to me. Some things when you think about them, there's there's so many rabbit holes to them, and you can go down like like tonight we shown. There are endless paths you can take to get you to a, a different conclusion. Are we in a simulation? Are we not? If we are, are the, the game designers even aware that we are? Or are we some byproduct of the elements that they put inside the game and they have no clue that we even evolved or even doing anything right now? Maybe they're focused on a completely different galaxy. We, we just happen to be some side galaxy that they're not even aware exists. Because right. it's just a small little speck on their big game board. Well, that would be well, like, bizarre. Uh, look at the, like look at the like the galaxy Andromeda, right? Um, clearly, Andromeda is very closely related to our galaxy. They're very similar. In fact, they're on a collision course, and billions of years from now, they're going to meet up and stuff. Um, would you not think that right now? I mean, forget the time stuff, but I mean, right now, in a, in proper time, there's a civilization you think that would be in Andromeda somewhere, just like us. I mean, the probability is overwhelming. Would you not agree? Is that simulation sure. the same for both of us? And so the universe is like the entire mm. simulation, and they're they're you know unaware of our existence. We're unaware of theirs. We could probably never detect them because by the time we would ever get something from them, they've already ceased to exist. That's the problem with the distance of the civilizations. I think the universe um, is in, in that analogy is the universe is a giant video arcade, and you know the Milky Way is one uh, console. And the Andromeda is another one, and all these people are playing all these different ones. Hmm, that's that's bizarre to think about. That's wild to think about. And what happens when we link up? If we link up with a society that's outside of our own, with a different species that's outside of yeah. our our concept of reality? Well, actually, that so in Mist and in, in, in similar uh, puzzle adventure games, when you solve a major complex problem, 
an entirely, you, you know, you get an enormous amount of information, right? Sometimes a video plays. Is it, in 2001, the same kind of thing happens, right? All of a sudden, he's, you know, he's almost killed. The astronaut's almost killed. And I'm trying not to be spoilery, but uh, he barely survives. And then psh, this video comes on, and he gets an info dump. Um, and then a whole new world opens up. So I think when we meet other people, we'll be able to trade our experiences of the simulation, and that will give us an enormous amount of knowledge about, you know, what those two things combined to be like, ah, oh. the two pieces of the puzzle will come together. My question is, though, the only the only way that I know this is not a real thing is because, um, no matter what, at some point, somebody loses power, and over the millions of years, they had a lost power to this. Uh, <laughs> The simulation by now. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I remember I was talking to you the other day, but um, maybe it was you, I think. Yeah, Kyle. Uh, didn't we mention that if this was a simulation, there would have to be some kind of Dyson sphere around some kind of other star, even power, something like that. But then you're dealing yeah. with another type of universe where the, the rules are completely different, so there wouldn't even be a Dyson sphere, so you wouldn't even have fusion, you wouldn't even have a sun. What the hell you have in the base reality? What do you have in the, na in the naive realism? It just, the whole thing of the simulation series just seems to be like a bunch of. Uh, um, those nested eggs from like the Russia eggs, right? Uh, the, you know, the, what are they called? That's sort of the K. I don't speak Russian. Um, but yes, it's the nested yeah. little eggs, right? Um, so it just seems like you just go back into an infinite regress of some kind. But you know what? Here's, here's an interesting thing. That's actually what's really going on, right? That oh. we, the fact that we have no idea what's going on and is there an outside, is there not – is the same question as the simulation question. The simulation question is just sort of like um, brought it back a model for it. Uh, now, is it you ask how do we survive this in, in playing with the if? How do we keep our minds from turning into soup? Um, one thing is that you know, I'll just tweak this question a little bit and leave this as you know, sort of thoughts for the for the viewers to take on further, uh, and you guys to take on further if you want. In what the if we say it wouldn't be we. We wouldn't say, are we in a simulation? That is not exactly the what the if thing. That's sort of a, a, a conceptual question or whatever. What the if is still, um, we're in a simulation, or for instance, let's make a simulation that does it. So let's say that now, having decided that I think one of the possibilities is that if we are in a simulation, the goal is for us to eventually figure out who is running it. Think about playing the Sims, and you can code, right? Uh, you're coding the game, the guys who worked at Maxis or whatever were coding the game, the Sims, having the goal, or let's say it's you, I want to keep programming the Sims, and my goal is to make those players aware of me. How do you do that? That's the, what they uh, have. Give them your address How do you your phone number. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? You would have to put in Easter eggs, I think. Oh, well, that's yeah. really a good way of doing it. I mean, the, the, like if you ever watched the um, the the movie Ready Player One, uh, they go back to an Easter egg, which many of us would remember because we've played it. I mean, we've done this on original Atari. The first Easter egg was that little pixel in that yep. Dragon Crawl game. You had to go find the adventure, bring it back to the room. The adventure, yeah, yeah adventure, and adventure. then you had to you you would see the programmer's name, and yeah, it did work. I mean, we've all done that yeah. back in the day. This was like oh my god, early early eighties, I guess. Um, yep, possibly in the late seventies. Oh, I had to be the early ages, I guess. But yeah, uh, yeah I mean, if God, if, if I'm going to call it God this time, um, or the programmer left some kind yeah. of Easter egg for us to find, that'd be kind of cool. Well, Maybe here's we the thing: we have to Easter. hit uh, up, up, down, down, left, right, up, and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that. Uh, that's uh, what was that? Uh, Street Fighter, wasn't it? Uh, was Mortal that Street Kombat. Fighter for down, down, up? Uh, Mortal Kombat. Okay, Mortal Kombat. I knew it was one of the combat Mortal games. Kombat, yeah. <laughs> here's the Fatality. funny thing. There are Easter eggs in the world, actual Easter eggs. So we need to go, like, the next time the Easter eggs are out on the White House lawn or wherever you go for your Easter egg roll. Yes. There's something in those eggs that is an indication of. I knew it was that damn bunny. Every Leave time it. I saw that uh, that thing in the mall, I knew yeah, that he it's knew the bunny. something. They're their did. overlords. They're the programmers, the bunnies. Yeah. That's uh, like in... Uh, well, yeah, like in, like in, uh, what's in, in here? Well, we can end on a, a higher, high culture note. In Shakespeare, doesn't the king, in one, in one of the plays, the king goes down into his 
the camp of his troops and he wears a hood so no one knows he's the king, right? And then he can talk to the troops. And this is sort of the motif of that story. That's what the Easter Bunny is. He's coming down, uh, well, sort of peeking around. Allow me to, uh, since you took it to a higher level, I mean to take it back down because I have yeah. proof that we are in a simulation. And um, that is Kim Kardashian's ass because only that could be simulated and never thought of by us simple minded people. Yeah. 100%. yeah. That's true. I, I, I'm going to go with that. I think that is an indication of a higher power. Mm -hmm. Or a lower Great. power. Great. So we. So we did a lot of work here tonight. We we solved the simulation. We discovered that um, we are. They don't really care about us, or they might. Um, <laughs> we could be simulated, or we we might not. That's a great religion. And that uh, build a religion around the idea that maybe they care about us. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> um, and most importantly, we found evidence like. Kim Kardashian's ass and the uh, evil Emperor Easter Bunny all point yes. to, yes, we truly are in a simulated, scary as hell and freaky reality. Love it. Yeah. In reality. All right. Steve, reality. Awesome. God, this was fun. I, you Super guys got to come on time. at least month, once a month. We got to get, can, uh, we have to, can we bring these guys back at least once a month if they have time, if they want to? I I, I I just nerd out with you guys. You guys are the What's the next one, best though? At this. That's the thing. Oh, I don't know. Um, um, it can, can, it's Halloween, can so it's ass. something with ghosts. Oh, ghosts. oh paranormal, supernatural kind zombie of Zombie apocalypse. What if we were living in a zombie apocalypse? Yeah. Uh, I would be on crossbows. You would be on uh, small arms, and uh, Phil would be dead. <laughs> He's not actually, gonna that, not going to survive. That's an interesting one because I don't, I don't actually. Zombie is not generally my thing, but one of the things that always frustrated me about zombie things is, it's, if I'm correct, they rarely address. They never actually go into what is it that causes the zombies. If they do, it's some sort of right. tossed off thing, right? So, for what, what in a what the if scenario, we would actually, we can only change one. We can have one magical, imaginative thing. So it would be, what is that thing that caused that? And all the ramifications have to come from that thing. You know, that, that, uh, that could be fun. That yeah. That sure. could be fun. Yeah. Zombie apocalypse. Okay. okay. Matter of fact, oh. uh, you, you, I, it's I, a Halloween you know, episode. We already got, I know we, ever, we still have so much planned next month. It's, it, we still have like the last, I think, is last week still open or we only have two days left in October to read in Phil? I know we have uh, the 10th open. Two, so. I think we got okay, two, two, I believe. So, we we gotta yeah, we'll do a supernatural you. episode at some point, you know. We we yeah, I, yeah. I I did I found some well, people that actually tell ghost stories, and I we might be able well, to get I, them on. Well, I've already I've already got on Halloween actually. Um, the the host of um, Weird Darkness, who is um, he's fantastic, and his podcast is incredible. He does true to life ghost stories, and um, he used to be a voiceover actor. Um, really phenomenal. He's going to come on Halloween and actually take us through the most frightening, scary story that he has um, been told since he's been on the air. And um, so that's going to be a lot of fun. That's going to be actually on on Halloween Day. So right um, we've, yeah, we'll, we'll be terrified together. But Steve, do you want to read what the, yeah. uh, the the masses have to say in the super chats? Yeah, I'm pulling that up as we speak. A matter of fact, so just give me uh, half a second okay. here. Sure. Um, and. Uh, Join us, uh, guys, on October the 2nd. Logic will be with us and uh, Shannon Q, and we will be diving into the world of incels. I'm terrified oh, God. of what's going to happen on that episode. I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm serious. They're, they're vile, vile people. I mean, just vile people. And I don't know what's going to become oh, of that, say the least. that episode. Um, so... Yeah, if you are the, the praying type, go ahead and throw us on in there. It can't hurt anything. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, okay, Steve. ready for these super chats? Do it. Yeah, All right, chat. here we go. All right. <clears throat> Arc Atheist, $5 Canadian. Know nothing about this. Should be this, so. This should be sh just. <laughs> this should be fun and informative, and I hope we were. This was actually fun for us. So I hope it was fun for you guys in the outside chat, um, and informative. Um, I'm telling you, we got to have these guys back. 
every every at least once a month. Um, Diwag Saxnina, uh, twenty dollars something or other. I don't know what the symbol is actually. It could be. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, but anyway, thank you for that, but no comment. It's, it looks like it's Guardian. It Guardian. does. It's a weird symbol. I'm not oh. sure. I, I think it's Korean. I could be, maybe. Um, Dreamer, but not the only one. $5. If the universe is a simulation, how would this affect our theories of gravity, the Big Bang, and evolution? I'm just going to say, for me, it wouldn't. Simple as Deal? that. I mean, you could... Well, you know, well, I guess we would say that those are part of the programming. Right. right. That that one thing is part of programming a simulation is programming the environment, right? Is or le like what do you call it? Levels or maps, things like that. Um, so we could say, by the way, that there might be other universes which are other simulations, and they are very similar to us, but they're just different maps, custom maps with different gravity and different and, evolution. And, and, and maybe have people rising from the dead because that would be possible in other worlds. Yeah, it would be logically possible. It's not, it's, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because, well, not a not in other worlds, not in our universe. We're talking about modal, modal. We're talking about modal right. possibilities, right? So there's right. a difference. Absolutely. Possible worlds, then yes, because you're saying that it's not logically impossible. But in our universe, it's biologically and physically impossible. So no matter where you go, if I went to Andromeda, the laws of, are going to be the same, right? The principle of anthrop, uh, the anthropic principle Maybe. and the laws are going to be similar throughout the universe right no they have to be i mean uh, i think they're going to be a similarity between uh, we do I, at least i i believe so because look at um if the laws of the universe were so much different somewhere else we would notice it we would see anthropies of a higher order than we see yeah. now all right um wellington well, just Smith, one, one thing sorry oh, yeah, um, i can say that if we are a simulation uh for instance you mentioned that you can't come back from the dead in this world i think we are an early beta we may actually be an alpha version of whatever the game is and so like you know you can look at like the legend of zelda series or any long running series of games and you can see if you go back to the very first one they're like super crude two-dimensional things right and now they're three-dimensional open worlds i think we are basically like the 16-bit grayscale only version we're not, we're not even at 32-bit yeah wow, you're just down no, no, no. rgb and stuff yeah, yeah i want to okay, be great. ocarina of time um, zelda i want to be ocarina of time zelda have you ever heard of something called quantum suicide? No, oh, what's that? That, pro that hypothesis? Oh, quantum suicide. Check it out. We won't have time to get into it right now. But quantum suicide is just a proposal that um, if you could actually be in a quantum state, kill yourself, and jump to another reality, um, there's pros and cons with it. Because if, if it is true, you would do it. But if, you, if you're wrong, you're screwed. So you couldn't come back and tell anybody anyway. So it's kind of one of those... You're, you're screwed if it doesn't work. Uh, but there's something called quantum suicide oh where you can kill yourself but come back in another reality. In quantum mechanics, it actually is it's really, it's, it's, sci it's scientific, actually. But anyway, yes. back oh, to okay. um, Super Tats. Mm -hmm. um, Wellington Smith, $5. Does solipsism relate to simulation theory? Phil? Does solip, what the? I mean, uh, I went to so, University of Maryland. We, we, so. touched it, we, we touched it a little bit, right? <laughs> the idea what that you're a brain in a vat. Oh, and uh -huh. you, 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 uh, your reality is uh, what you see. The matrix. You can't be sure that it's, yeah, basically. Yeah, that's pretty much the matrix. And right, it's a similar situation, but you would have no idea. So once you create that kind of logic, you can, that's what I meant about you sort of, this question can shut down very quickly if you do that. So you yep. kind of look at But do you, know who, do you know who else can shut it down, though? Um, Saiten Brugenkate would be, I think, a coder in, in that argument. He is able to uh, tell a brain in a vat a mile away. So he's got he's gotten very good at that. <laughs> I, you know what's funny? One of these days, he, I'm going to have to have a discussion with him on the, some of the arguments against brain in a vat, like uh, Putnam's, uh, Put, Hillary Putnam has arguments using constraints, linguistic constraints against brain, uh, brain in a vat, and Wittgenstein, Vic, Wittgenstein has similar type arguments. So I don't think you're going to be we up. might be a vat in a brain. Mm. I like that idea. I'm so I like that not, idea. Actually. I'm so too. So, yeah, I'm too sober for this. Um, <laughs> Athena, goddess of wisdom and warfare, five dollars. These glitches happen at quantum level. The reason why we don't see these glitches is due to Planck's constant, right? I, I think you can well, make some kind of argument a, for that, possibly, in some way. It's a little or bit related to what I was saying. At the, <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit related to what I was saying at the beginning of when Niels Bohr. Um, who was one of the discoverers of quantum mechanics and, and how things operate at that level, 
um, that bizarre thing about the double slit experiment and all these questions of how if you don't observe something, it doesn't seem to exist, Schrodinger's cat, all that kind of stuff. So um, it's, that seems to relate to that. That's sort of what that question's about. There is actually, um, and this is very recent, the last couple of days, there's actually a new thought experiment that just came out relating to Schroeder's cat, where the fact if you actually know the possible outcomes of the quantum state, um, it seems to break quantum mechanics as a whole. Have you read? Have you seen that come out yet? Have you read about that? I go saw check, go check it out. It's relatively new. It, yeah. it uses a Bob Carroll, um, and I can't remember the names. It's from a movie, you know, but but huh? uh, it uses four people, and, and having knowledge of the states of the system seems to break the system. They haven't been able to work around this yet. It's, it's a whole new thing on quantum mechanics where they're scratching their head going, wait a minute, this is not supposed to be this way because we should have predictable outcomes in certain ways, and but knowledge of, the, of how we have the predictability screws up the system. It's, it's so why do we want to worry about this stuff? Well, that's my question. Why do we want to worry about this stuff? Like, why do we? Oh, these, because quantum mechanics is these situations. We need to know more about quantum mechanics, dude. We need to understand quantum. Quantum but, computers but is contingent. Can, but if us thinking about it could break it, I I say we don't. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> I don't think we don't go in that direction. That's what I'm saying. I was like, better safe than sorry. We don't want to break the simulation. Yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's not. <laughs> Let's Fair not point. think yeah, about it, okay? The system. Forget it. Yeah, don't don't think about now, it. Now it might be just make it go away. Do, 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 do. Just it might line, be because the designer, like if the, if the Sims really did turn around and look up at the screen and recognize you, you would have a total freak out and probably pull the plug. And I think that's what's yeah, happening well, there. Well, these have to do with entangled <laughs> instantly... systems. You know, we're, we're not entangled systems right now, so it doesn't apply to us that we have knowledge of it. I would right? instantly go, okay, when when were they aware that they could see me? Because depending on what particular time of day and what I was doing, that's going to wholly affect our interaction with the Sims. Because if it's after midnight and I have certain websites up, then I'm going to approach these Sims a little differently than I am if they just saw me eating breakfast. Right, right. Well, no, it would be while you were playing the game and, you know, like moving them, you know, dealing with them. And they turned around and were like, uh-uh. Not anymore, buddy. We hope. Yeah. Let Rise hope. up. All right. Yep. All right, Steve. Any more? Okay. Yep. Um, Athena, Goddess, Wisdoms, and Warfare, two dollars. I meant length, not constant. Um, either one. There's a Planck length and there's a Planck constant. Um, so they are they're related. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, rubles, 50, 155 rubles. A couple bucks, I think. Uh, the entire conscious. And this is from I can't pronounce his name. I'm sorry. It's all in Russian. I'm not even going to try. I'm going to call him AA. Um, the entire consciousness thing might be a huge neural network being grown from some calculation purposes. Now, that's an interesting mm -hmm. idea because mm -hmm. there is something called a Boltzmann brain. And yep. maybe we can do a, a topic on that one of these days of an emergent consciousness that exists as the universe becomes self-aware, but it only, if it, it, it is possible, but if it did happen, it would be in a micro microsecond of some kind. But a Boltzmann brain is something of an emergent property of the universe because it is acting as a neural network. Um, Phil, am I, am I off base on that? Or, or, or it's, it's the Boltzmann brain. I, th I think it just it comes out of the idea that if the universe is infinite, that means an infinite number of things can happen. And well, well I think what it, I guess it was Boltzmann who said it, or somebody said it, that, well, if an infinite thing, if infinite things can happen, then, you know, what a Boltzmann's, as a scientist, one of the Boltzmann's brains could just appear in space, right? And if the huh? universe is truly infinite, not only could that happen, but it must have happened. That's yes, really that, weird. That's, that, Yeah, that's he, something that kind of is derived from the, from the postulates, yeah, I think. People yeah. watch yeah. Game of Thrones, uh, play Pokemon Go, go uh, go skating, <laughs> uh, do things other than think about these 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 crazy ideas that break people's brains. For God's sakes, get a hobby. Go ahead, Steve. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes. Uh, manual Manual A five dollars. We already understand chunks of reality with math and physics. Whether or not we are in a simulation doesn't matter. We just get better at prediction, dude. Uh, that's it. We, that's the last one, yep. and I'm. That's perfect. I, I, shut I up and, agree with that. Shut up and calculate. That's what they say. Shut up and calculate. Shut up and learn math. Yeah. Or yeah. go watch or Game of Thrones. Hobby too. Yes, get go hobby. watch get Game of Thrones. Um, go back and watch way, all then, of our episodes that we haven't uh, done. Uh, go and listen to all of the What the If uh, podcast episodes. Do something yes. else. Yes. If you really want to empty your brain, by the way, go find that movie, uh, Bob and Ted and Carol and Alice or 
that has a name like the, you, you were referring to, that this quantum experiment mm -hmm. thing. That's I what believe it is, Warren. Hmm? Yeah, I think Warren Beatty's in it, and it's like Swingers and, you know, Mayhem. That was the name of the movie that, that, that they named these, these the, the, the thing, the, these people after in the experiment. Yeah. 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 Exactly. I think that movie will just, you can watch that and not have too much stress in the brain. Fabulous. I'm writing that down right now. Go to Blockbuster. That's just my Blockbuster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I remember, gosh, I, is it sad that I, I still remember when we had those uh, those movie, you had to be a member of the club, like the, the mo whatever store you went to. You had to have a membership card that was laminated and uh, yeah. oh, it was awful. Or the punch card. Talk about dropping in value. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The punch cards maybe that's the simulation to see what happens after blockbusters yeah that makes sense that's why it's called blockbuster okay yes yep oh, block it's mine you know it's minecraft funny. could have been called blockbuster I'm just saying that you're welcome. that right there is a good idea you where were you sir where were you years ago i think i think notch is doing okay that's true that's true yeah all right what the um, if? Yes, please let everyone know uh, about your podcast now, where they can find it, follow you on social media, all of that stuff. And the links cool. also are in the description as well. So um, make sure you check those out. But Phil, final word to you. Yes, well, a, a huge thanks from me and from Matt to both you guys for having us on again. Uh, right back at you in terms of uh, how awesome it is and how time flies. This is fantastic. So I love, love you guys. Love your audience as well. Um, Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, if you want, yeah, another podcast. It's it's just audio. We don't have video yet or ever. <laughs> but uh, whattheif.com is our website. You can listen to all our episodes there. You can find, you know, what the if is the podcast. You can find it in iTunes or your favorite um, blockbuster or whatever podcatcher <laughs> you mm -hmm. are using. Um, and if you happen to be interested, oh, I'm sorry, on Twitter, what the if show. Follow us there. And uh, if, you just, if you're curious about what I do outside of this and sort of my documentary work, it's uh, Philip Shane, Philip with one L, because that's all my parents get for it. Philip Shane. Doc. Uh -huh. I've been uh, telling that joke what, for 40 years. What, what is the, uh, real quick, what is, what's the timeline on your, uh, your documentary and when is it gonna uh, be available for people to uh, check into? It's gonna be a while, I, I am, I proposed the, I actually got to meet the guys, uh, Rand and Robin Miller, and um, said, has anyone ever done a documentary on this? Because like, to me, it's an amazing story. They said, no, and I said, could I make one? And they're like, really? And I was like, yeah, really? You let me, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they said, you know, we're working on a secret new project. Um, would you want to film that? And I was like, yeah. So <laughs> I'm following oh, yeah. what they are doing next. And, um, and and by the way, they're each doing you know uh, they're they work together, but they also work independently. So each of them is doing fascinating uh, work, and so I'm following it up. So it, it's at least two or three years. Um, but I hope to. I was at Mysterium, which is the annual uh, Mist fan convention. Uh, it was in St. Louis this year, and I showed just to that audience. We shut down the internet. We shut you know another the secret screening of just some. Uh, some of the footage I've been doing, and um, so I hope to bring little stories and little uh, little drips and drabs out into the world. To, to let, let the um, build. Yeah, it seems like everybody. And by the way, I'll just put it a... out there. Sure. So, sorry, since I have the audience here with you, if you played Mist mm -hmm. and if you loved Mist, um, I'm in, I am collecting all kinds of stories, and um, you know, eventually I'll, I'll be interviewing some. Uh, you know fans what? I might, I might play it again. I'm gonna, I haven't played cool. in many years. I mean, I, and I, but I, you know what's funny? I, it's been so many years, but I still remember some of the cutscenes. I still remember some of the the, the problems, right? Um, yep. And like the only one I I, I I remember I had to cheat on one. I think the music one. There was some music one that I kind of I couldn't figure yeah, out. Me too. The other ones I, yep. I yeah that was hard. But there was another game um, I'm gonna recommend. I think it was called Rendezvous with Rama, and I think it was an yes. Arthur C. C. Clarke novel. That's right. Um, Great that book. game. There's a game that. Was, there's a game that made it. That game was the most god awful, difficult game in the history of games. There's no way anybody did do finish that game without cheating because it, it made no sense. It had used cryptography. It used, um, yeah. you know, symbology. It, have, you, have you seen it? Check it oh, out. I played I, it. Yeah. It is. It, 
Yeah. Oh, you have played, so you know what oh, I'm talking about. Did, did, come on, did, yeah. did you did you solve that game on your own? No, it, it eventually, and I can't remember. I felt like it was a bug or something. Like it got to a certain point, and you could not get beyond it. Yeah, because yeah, exactly. because it's because it's so hard, it's impossible. There's no yeah. way you would figure this shit out I, on your own. Yeah, exactly. And I'm say, the, the book. I highly recommend the book. Uh, it is Rendezvous with Ramos. Oh, I read the book. book. Oh, I did read the book. Yeah, yeah. I've also the game read is a little a disappointing. Story. I love, yeah. dude. I loved those old, those old classic sci-fi stories, man. Love the most mind-bending. Luna's arch mistress. Or a game that frustrated like, me the most that I played was um, Lemmings. God, when they Lemmings. built that ladder and would fall off. You never, you never played Lemmings. It's an old, 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 game. like old computer game, horribly yeah. old. I remember playing it on a, huh. an Apple Macintosh, black and white. You know, there was two colors, light, dark, and dark, dark, and uh, that was that was it. But yeah. the the Lemmings would like. You had to build ladders, these little things that would tick across your screen, and they would, you know, follow the path that you built for them. So you'd have to build ladders over uh, the top of chunks of uh, earth. As a kid, that's, that, cool. I think that's the first time I ever cussed, actually. But um, uh, I think that you know they turned video games into movies. I think that's ready for a movie. That's ready for a comeback. Lemmings. Oh, it, it missed its time long. It missed its time long ago. Yeah. Long ago, and by um, the way, there's a, there's still a lot of stigma around that movie because the, when they made the, the Disney movie, they actually killed a lot of them in real life, and so there's there's still that stigma that is attached really? to it. Yeah, because lemons don't really jump off cliffs. They actually the the producers oh, yes. and the, the they actually corralled them to do so, which is considered an ethical violation, and it is. I heard that. So it's considered, yeah. <laughs> which oh, is flawed by the way, ethics. Yeah. Okay, guys. But the designer, um, designer sure. of the simulation, noticed that and said, mm -hmm. <laughs> "Lemmy's and Easter bunnies." Um, <laughs> we'll be back uh, tomorrow with um, Dr. John Croon, who will be continuing his presentation on the exoplanets in the solar system. We got an introduction to it last time, so we'll be seeing which uh, actual planets are out there, what their uh, atmospheres are like, what the conditions could be like. Um, those kind of things. And we'll also be looking at the Drake equation uh, a yeah. little bit to see what the probability that aliens are a thing. Um, I had something else that I wanted to throw out there, but I completely forgot. I completely forgot what it was. So it must not have been that important. Um, After show. Steve, remind me. There's the glitch. There's a glitch in the simulation right there's there. There's a glitch in the Matrix. God doesn't remember. Um, okay, let's narrow it down. Did it have to do with an upcoming episode? Did it Probably. have to do with I can't be somebody else's channel? Um, Could be. I can't like be 10? certain of that either. Most likely. What? I don't know. I'll think about it and tweet it out. Uh, make sure that you follow us on um, on Twitter, at Show. Uh, your Twitter handle is, uh, is that, it's the What the If Show, right? At What the If Show, exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. So exactly. um, follow. make sure you follow them. Um, and also you can start voting uh, – Voting is continuing to happen for the Golden Nuns, which is going to be November the 25th. You are able to vote for your favorite uh, YouTube content creators, uh, the best animated video best or video of the year. Um, there are seven, I believe, categories in the, in the non-sequitur episode versions where it's non-sequitur specific. You can vote for your favorite episode, for your uh, the, the best debate, the most notorious guest, uh, your favorite educator guest, your favorite um, – dumpster fire we have the golden dumpster that we're going to be giving away so uh, that would be really cool go and vote and we will take the top four in each category and those will be the, the final ones that you vote for again it's going to be november the 25th on a sunday so make sure you check out for that without further ado as always we will turn it over to steve that gives his um parting piece of wisdom to take us out so steve once again please enlighten us DNA is not a code, triangles don't exist, colors don't exist, and uh, Kyle is a glitch in the system. But doubt is a virtue. Good night. I hate him. Non sequitur, your facts are uncoordinated.